start that recording immediately. Because we're in the bee garden. I gotta change my- the name of my thing. Shit. Whoops. Give me a second. <laughs> yeah, I'll just start playing something else. <laughs> Her choose... Last... Reward... Escape room game. The least accurate thing you could possibly say. Maybe, uh, I don't know what to say. I guess Alice is cool. That's what the name of the stream is. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, I did, I did switch it to easy. I also have uh, some food and another thing to drink. It's soda. Ah, yes, you're right. I always forget. Boop. There we go. I don't think I'll put the content warning for... Uh, for the third game, but uh, Radical Six does come up in that one, though. No, 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 the game. The game has that's a content warning for the game. It's just a warning in case people can't, like, aren't expecting it and don't want to, you know, encounter that in their game, in the stream. A butterfly, yes. There are no fish at the stream. <laughs> Sounds pretty boring. Hello, Raystone. A redstone. Sewer slide. Oh, yeah, I I for these. Uh, unless it's, like, a humorous line, I'm not gonna read them out loud, because there's so much reading in these games. So much. Aren't you guys tired? Why don't we rest on this bench for a while? Content warning. <laughs> Wait, you were joking. I'm actually reading that fast. <laughs> if we sit here, won't um, our butts get wet? Damn it. I've been made. <laughs> Content warning, meaning this game's contents contain, uh, you know. Radical Six is a fictitious disease that, um... It does a lot of things. But the big one is that it, it eventually, like, the, an a person infected with Radical Six eventually has an incredibly strong urge to commit suicide, so.
Yeah, we don't know the order, though. A key! <laughs> Nothing to say about that. And a shovel. I can- a nice big shovel. I can use it to shovel stuff. Like dirt! What? No. Look, Luna, it's Sigma's house. Is that true, Sigma? Is this shed your house? You must be going through a rough time. <laughs> He's like, I have nothing to say to that. I can't see anything from here. Okay. Don't people usually hide their house keys under a flower pot or in the mailbox? They do? Just trust me. I'm sure there's something under there. Well, what do you know? A silver key? Bird's eye view of the garden, kind of like a map. Aha! An island? There aren't any islands in here, though. We should look for a mound of dirt. But where would we find a mound of dirt? They look like onions. Hey, it's a paprika! No, that's a pepper. Probably a bell pepper. Paprika is what you call the spice you make from them. Oh. Huh. What is this game on? Uh, as in, like, what system? I have the PC version, but, uh, this was originally on the Vita? And later on, it was on the PS4 and Steam. I'm not sure. Wait, is there something in there? Oh yeah, let me take a look. It's a coin. A pepper that's been split in half. This is where I found the yellow coin. Maybe there are things in the other vegetables too. Okay. Oh yeah, it was on the 3DS. I guess we'll go over here. Mound of dirt. This, yes? Let's dig. Where is my shovel? It looks like the soil was disturbed here recently. Hmm, I wonder why. Ah, yes, those. I guess we'll head over here, then. A bench. 
Looks like there's just enough room for two on this bench. Why are you looking at me? Oh, no reason. It's a bench with room for two. They say sitting on a park bench with your boyfriend is pretty romantic. You ever done that, Luna? Uh, of course not. Stop making fun of me. You want to sit down with me? With... you? Um... well... um... L let me think about it. It'll break through the ceiling eventually. <laughs> and maybe we can use it to escape. Sigma, you're scaring her. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, wow, why didn't I think of that? Oh, I know, because it's idiotic. <laughs> Looks like there's some sort of tile mosaic on the bottom of the pond. It's a lion! A tombstone. So, the people buried here are Mr. Tufui and Mrs. Ego Eris? What? Well, that's what it says. Tufui Ego Eris. That's an epitaph. Something like- something that they feel represents them, or just a phrase they liked. What does it mean? Beats me. Any ideas, Luna? It looks like it's Latin, but I don't know what it means either. Hmm. Did you see this? Looks like there's a keyhole down here near the bottom. You're right. But we're gonna grab the metal detector. That kind of looks like a mop. <laughs> Oop, wrong button. Going to dig up the skunk cabbage? Poor thing. It's never done anything to you. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll replant it when we're done. <laughs> Snazzy. Isn't opening though. I don't have a gold key yet. I forgot to look at the skunk cabbage, my bad. I think this is part of something. This part here kind of looks like a butterfly. Like the wings. Well, let's combine it with the metal rod. I made this by combining some things I'd found. It looks like some kind of handle. Gold key. Paper with dots. I think I know this, but I forgot that I need to pull out my... my journal. My journal of knowledge. There's really not that much notes in here, so... Uh. And on the left plate... Bee garden is not that hard, I don't think, so... A paring knife, what's that? It's a knife you use for small, delicate work, like... deveining shrimp, but you can use it to cut pretty much anything. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> you know all about cooking and stuff. I bet Alice just cuts things with her bare hands! I guess it's time I showed you just how good I am at cooking things. <laughs> I think I'll start by cooking you. Sorry. I can use it to weigh things. What about the table? No. Cannot interact with the table.
Nice. Sauteed Sigma. Yes. We turned the waterfall off. Probably need something that matches that description. Do I have anything like that? I have coins, but I don't have enough. I clearly need more. Which is why we're gonna do this. When I turned the handle, it got dark. Maybe the light was sort of a surrogate sun. If that's the case, it didn't just get dark, it became nighttime. So now we can't really look at anything, but... Yeah, stars. So we got purple, blue, yellow, green, and red. However, that's not something I need to do right now, so let's make it daytime again. <laughs> Instead, we're going to use a metal detector on vegetables. <laughs> I have a tomato. I've got a red coin that was found in a tomato. Dig up an onion. Now we got a white coin. And this cucumber. And now we have a greenish coin found in a cucumber. Uh now we do the scale. Right? Like the green coin is heavier than the white coin. The green coin is heavier than the yellow coin. And it's heavier than the red coin. This kicks you down to easy mode if you mess up enough. Yeah, that's right, I remember that. Why well, it's heavier than red. Yellow's heavier than white. Yeah, and after enough tries, it freaks out. <laughs> it just flew everywhere! If you use the scale more than five times, it triggers this spring, which makes the whole thing shake. So do we pick up the coins? But we don't need to mess with that. Because I have it written right here. <laughs> Luckily, I think you only need to try it, like, twice. I don't think you can do it in one attempt.
Like, I think you do need to have the scale flip out at least once in order to get all the notes correct. I will say the blue password for the blue password for this one messed me up for too long, I think. Like the first one is just the order that you see them as it goes around, and then the blue password is the sizes of the stars. I think it's smallest to largest. Oh, nope, it's largest to smallest. Yeah. I don't know how you- I guess you'd figure it out eventually, but... Yeah, the blue passer for this one's kind of bullshit. I still think the lounge one is the hardest, because you it actually requires some serious note-taking to figure that out. But... I was like, it's probably their sizes in correlation, it's just it doesn't tell you whether you start with the largest or the the smallest. <laughs> You're okay, Val. He barked at me. <laughs> oh, right, um... Not memo. Archives. Star, star, moon. Yes, Val. Got our silver file. And then up next is... Star, star, sun. Beautiful. Oh, it opened again. Is there something inside? There's a lot of stuff in here. First off... Uh, floor B. We got Ambidex room keys. This is the moon card that the announcement was talking about. While well, you're a solo, Luna and I'll take one and you take the other one. No! <laughs> it's alright, the VOD, the VOD will be there. Ah oh, yes, what is this? Some kind of diagram? It doesn't make any sense. I wonder what it is. The line following it is... Bizarre. We'll figure this out later. Watch it when you sleep. Yes, absorb the knowledge subconsciously through your brain by sleeping during the stream. During the- I do that. I, I fall asleep to VODs. Oh well, just forget about it for now. I know not everyone can though, so that's not like the end-all solution. Uh, just forget about it for now. We can always come back to it later. And there's two more things in here. What's this? It looks like a note. It says IG equals immunoglobulin. What's immunoglobulin? 
It's another word for an antibody. You mean like the thing in your body that fights off bacteria and viruses and stuff? Yes. So, what is this supposed to tell us? Honestly, I have no idea. The only thing left is this key. That must be the key to the exit. Yes, I think you're right. We should be able to use it to open the door. Yes. Awesome. What are we waiting for? Let's get the fuck out of here. No sooner had we stepped out of the garden than I saw the three people I'd watched leave through the green door sometime earlier. Whoa! What are you guys doing here? We ought to be asking you the same thing. How'd you get here? Sigma, hand me the map. Map? Oh, right. I dug the map out of my pocket and spread it out in front of us. You three came in through the blue door, right? Yeah. And which room did you go into? Mm, this fan-shaped one. It's called the Bee Garden. Bee Garden? It's this big dome with a bunch of plants in it. Mordio. Yes, Mordio! I feel like I misspelled that. <laughs> I wonder why. Look, you can go see it yourself later, alright? What about you guys? Well, after we went through the green door, we ended up in the treatment center. Hmm. And then we met up. Right here. So, what's the treatment center? It sounds a lot like the infirmary. You wanna have a look? We can go back to any of the rooms we've already visited. So? Sure, let's have a look. After a few moments of brisk walking, we found ourselves in the treatment center. What are those? They're why this is called a treatment center. Those pods can cure a number of illnesses, and even repair certain injuries. Whoa, that's nuts! How about you climb in one of them, Dio? Why? Well, maybe it can fix whatever's wrong with your brain. Uh, hey! You wanna start something, lady? <laughs> Calm down now, son. You don't cool off a bit and I'll have to throw you in one of these pods here. Huh? Why? Weren't you paying attention? They have a cold sleep function. I figured that ought to cool your head up. Wait, did you say cold sleep? That's where they freeze you, right? And you can stay that way for a really long time? Yeah. According to some records we found in here, until about eight hours ago, there were three frozen people in these pods. Three people? Who? You mean three of us were? We don't know. All we found was what was in the logs for the pods. How long were they here? No idea. Part of the logs were erased. All that's left is when the cold sleep function turned off. It records them thawing out, getting up. That's it. Then they could be anyone. <laughs> well, anyone but you. What? Why not Alice? Because you don't need a device like this to freeze Alice. Am I wrong? Huh? What are you talking about? You don't need to play dumb. The water in your body isn't normal water. It's something called Ice-9. It freezes at 96.8 degrees. Weird how you know that. That means all you have to do to put yourself in cold sleep is drop your body temperature below 96.8. No fancy machine needed. Where on earth did you hear that? From Clover. Clover? When we were exploring the lounge during the first round. I see. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Oh man, you fell for that one hook, line, and sinker, didn't you? Clover was messing with you. That is, if she even said anything to you at all. It was a lie. A joke? A joke? No, there's no way it was a joke. I'm sure about it. Your body is made of ice nine. Well, you're mistaken. It's a ridiculous misunderstanding. 
an urban legend. With seemingly no other prompting, Alice launched into a lengthy explanation. It's a believable story. You cut me some slack. <laughs> it went something like this. At some point in the past, someone found a frozen, mummified Egyptian queen. I thought it was a priestess. That was What was curious about this mummy, however, was that it remained frozen at room temperature. People began to refer to her as All Ice, which eventually became simply Alice. Rumors that her body was made of Ice-9 began to circulate, and her bizarre refusal to thaw only compounded them. They say that the mummy finally thawed, and when it did, it began to move. And ever since then, I've had people say they thought I was her. I mean, really? How could anyone believe something so ridiculous? The existence of this mysterious Alice and of this ice that doesn't melt are just urban legends. But why would people make that mistake about you in, the, in particular? It can't just be because your name's Alice. There are tons of Alices. Is it because of your face and how you look? Well... It is true that I am both beautiful and elegant. Can I really be blamed if people think I'm an Egyptian queen? I don't think that's the only reason, though. Someone who made that mistake said something to me once. They claimed they'd seen me before. Of course, I immediately pressed the issue. Do you mean the mummy, Alice? I said. When? Where? Of course, they were at a loss. In fact, I began to feel a little sorry for them. So I told them something. If you're so convinced, then maybe I am actually Alice. But maybe I've lost my memory and can't remember who I am. And so on and so on. I'm still not sure why Clover would tell you something like that, though. Even if she was just messing with you, it seems a little out of left field. You really think she put that much thought into it? She was probably just screwing with him and it was the first thing that came to mind. Maybe she wanted to see if she could get him to believe something completely ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I could see her doing something like that. Well, I think that's enough idle gossip for now. The cold sleep business is interesting. I still to this day do not understand why ISS-9 is brought up. <laughs> we should go see if the other team has returned to the warehouse yet. At Alice's request, we made our way out of the treatment center. It's one of those things where you could assume that perhaps maybe it was supposed to be covered in Zero Time Dilemma, but it didn't actually end up happening. ISS-9 is a fictitious Tissues, uh, type of ice. It's a special type of water that freezes when it gets lower than 96.8 degrees. In the first game, it had more of a presence, um, because it was brought up about how, like, Alice was on the Gigantic, or on the Titanic, rather. So, the owner, Gordain, who was the collector of all things pertaining to the Titanic, uh, wanted her and bought her in, like, a black market auction and hid her... What was it? I forget the specific quote, but she was hidden behind, underneath the library or something like that. And in the, in the first game, you come across something that is beyond the library that looks suspiciously like a coffin that is empty. But Ice-9 makes an important, like, presence because it's also in incongruence with the talks about how, like, the crystallization of glycerin and all that. If Ice-9 existed and that information was somehow sent to uh, other types of water then the entire planet's water could potentially turn into Ice-9, which would mean that the entire planet's water so source would, would freeze if it got below 96.8 degrees, which would probably end the world. <laughs> but it was like, it was brought up as like a, there's this phenomenon that people can't explain where there was a time period in which things would always obey according to a specific law that we could not understand. And then one instance where it randomly changed, and then after that, all other forms, even those that were not in contact with the one that was behaving differently, began to behave the same way as that previously only one outlier, such as the crystallization of glycerin, where it was really, really hard, basically impossible to do, and then randomly 
some glycerin just happened to crystallize at some point during transport, and then other types of other glycerin uh, molecules began to crystallize, even those that were not part of the original batch that had. And other things like that. It was using real-world or semi-real-world phenomena to talk about a fictitious thing and be like, B but what if? What if this happened? Wouldn't it be awful? <laughs> and that was used as, like, a talking about the morphogenetic field. There were also other types of things, such as experiments with... with rats, as well as with people, that showed a phenomenon of which the more people know about something, the more likely when you come across somebody who's never interacted with that knowledge will just somehow know the answer. As if they're pulling that information from a field that cannot be seen. But what is the Titanic? <laughs> I don't think we need to explain what the Titanic is. I think enough people know about the Titanic. <laughs> Looks like another warehouse. It looks like the same warehouse. Hey, look. Three more doors. But yeah. Other stuff like that. Like there was uh there is the example of a of an author who wrote two books that had eerily accurate, like information in comparison to the Titanic and what caused the Titanic to sink that were both written before the Titanic was a thing. Like, so before the Titanic existed and therefore before the Titanic sank. <laughs> They're all glowing white. You think? That author, having been, was one of the people who was on the Titanic and I think actually died. Which led into the discussion of, do you think perhaps he wrote the books as a, as a form of premonition where he was able to see the future? But the reason why he had to be on the Titanic if he saw the future was because his present self was... Co his future self was sending that information to him in the past so he would write that book as a type of, like, warning or something, almost. There's a lot of really interesting discussions that come up in the first game that the second game brings up again later, such as Ice Nine, but uh, is not as prevalent to the story or of what's going on. It just is like, yeah, this was from the first game, so we're bringing it up again. Nine Nine is really cool, though. Big recommend. This game is also fairly good. I don't dislike it. It's just not the best of the three, in my opinion. <laughs> These might be the next set of chromatic doors. I'd bet on it. Hell Look, yeah. They've got the same boxes next to them as the other doors. You know what's gonna be really awesome when we play uh, Zero Time Dilemma? I don't have notes for that one, so I'm gonna have to resolve all the puzzles on my own. <laughs> That'll be awesome. Some, some are easier than others, right. some are not. <laughs> oh boy. The taser puzzle. I'm thinking about that. <laughs> they haven't all been the same color before. Uh, we definitely need to tell the others about this. Only a couple are hard. Yeah, only a couple. Some are difficult just because it's like a type of puzzle that I just really don't understand. <laughs> Like, the taser puzzle is just bullshit. I really don't understand how you're supposed to figure that one out. Um, meanwhile, the one where it's like, you gotta form the the puzzle pieces in the shape of a heart. Uh, in the, uh... In the, uh... 
I forget what that room is called. The Billard's room, I guess, is what it is. I was just stuck on that one for a really long time because I just can't do those puzzles. <laughs> Rec room, yeah. Rec room is probably what it was. Things like the healing room were pretty easy. Um... There was one that I was so good at that I solved the puzzle out of order because I just fiddled with it enough that it got the solution. So Eric was like, what the fuck? How the hell did you solve that? <laughs> And he's just like, I don't know. <laughs> Hello, Theta. We just wrapped up the bee garden. And we're back into the Flore warehouse. How was Tails? It was fun. It was pretty good. Oh, thank goodness. You finally returned. I was beginning to get anxious. Did something happen? Yes. It's Quark, you see. He... What? What happened to Quark? He collapsed. It happened so suddenly. We were just searching our room. What? Please, you must hurry to the infirmary. They're the clothes that he's had when he first appeared. We don't know where he got them, but those are what he has. Clover is looking after him. But his condition could change at any moment. Yeah, the, that's the outfit that he's always had. You should go. You thought he was naked before. No, no, he always had the robe. Oh no. <laughs> Tenmyoji shoved Kay aside and leapt through the yellow door. The rest of us exchanged a few startled looks, then ran off after him. Quark. Come on, kid. Get a hold of yourself. Tenmyoji grabbed Quark's shoulders and began to shake him desperately. It was Clover who stopped him. Hey, what are you doing? He's sick, and we don't even know what's wrong with him. What if you make him worse? <sighs> then what am I supposed to do? I have to save him. Save? Well, that seems a little extreme. Maybe he just has anemia or something. No, that's not it. I know him better than any of you. He doesn't have anemia. He's never just collapsed before. Well, then call an ambulance and stop freaking out about it. You son of a bitch. This is serious. The infirmary seems pretty well equipped. There are plenty of diagnostic tools, but without a doctor, there's not going to be much we can do with him. <laughs> oh, right. Well, we've got Luna. Luna? Right. I remember Dio saying something. You have a medical license, don't you? Wait, really? Is that true, Luna? Um, well, yes, but... You have to take a look at him, then. Please. Quark needs your help. Okay. I'll see what I can do. I think that machine over there is a medical scanner. It's called an Atom. It uses nuclear magnetic resonance imaging to examine and diagnose people. So that thing can tell us what's wrong with Quark? Yes, I believe it can. I don't want to rush you, but the sooner the better. Just let us know if you need anything. Of course. The whole process took only a few minutes. The machine scanned Quark's body, and within seconds, his results lit up the screen. Words too complicated for me to understand scrolled across it, and as she read them, Luna's face grew dark. She bit her lip and just stood there for a moment, looking down at Quark before she spoke. Well, I... I know what's wrong with him. My favorite character? Oh, goodness. I feel like you've asked this before, but I don't remember what my answer was, if you have. Ah... <sighs> uh. Did I? I think I said Ten Miyoji. I feel so terrible saying this, but Quark is. You said Alice because you're cool. <laughs> Alice is very cool. Quark 
It's the title of my stream right now. Viral infection. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Don't tell me. Yes. He's been infected with a virus called Radical Six. Have you heard of this virus? Radical Six, I mean. Uh, yeah. I told Alice and Tenmyoji about it. Fai and I heard about it from Luna. Dio and Luna were the first- were two of the first people to investigate the infirmary. They must have seen the newspaper clipping that Quark found. I'd stayed behind after the AB game, and they'd all split up and gone into different rooms. <laughs> it seemed like, one way or another, everyone had heard about Radical Six. Is she cool as ice? All ice. Get it? Ice Nine! <laughs> ah! <laughs> no. He can't. How could he have gotten infected? That's not possible. Something about the tone of his voice seemed strange. Why wasn't it possible? Had Tenmyoji known about Radical Six before the rest of us? There must be something we can do! How can we cure him? Well, Adam says there's an antiviral serum called Excelivir. It's the only way to counteract Radical Six. If we can inject him with some, he should... He should be okay. Where is it? Shouldn't it be in the infirmary somewhere? Yeah, we looked around, but we didn't see anything. I don't trust a damn thing you say. I'm asking Luna. I'm sorry, but Theo's telling the truth. We didn't find anything. Damn it. What about the other rooms? Sigma, what about you? Did you find anything? No, nothing like medicine. I mean, it was just, like, a park. Lots of vegetation and stuff, but no medicine. What about you, Kay? Was there any medicine in your room? We visited the laboratory. There were a number of chemicals and concoctions there, some of which were medicine. But nothing like what we're searching for, I'm afraid. Axelivar also cures the A virus. Yes, of course. Oh God, then he's <laughs> he's going to. Oh God, no. Look, just to be sure, the three of you went to the treatment center, right? And you're sure it wasn't there? No, there was nothing even remotely like it. You went there too, didn't you? The only thing in the treatment center are those treatment pods. <laughs> Treatment pods. That's it! If we put Quark in one of those pods. For a moment, there was silence. Quark? Quark! Oh, thank God. You're awake! Get away from me! What? Quark, what are you. <sighs> Sorry, Grandpa. I can't. I. I have to. Have to what? What are you talking about? Isn't it obvious? I have to escape. But how? Like this! Quark's hand moved like lightning. He'd grabbed hold of the scalpel and was driving it straight towards his heart. Stop! Ugh, pretty tough for a kid. Hey, guys! I could use a hand here! Uh, yeah, right. On it. Me too. Stop it! Let go of me, you jerks! Tenmyoji! What the hell are you doing? Get over here! Tenmyoji! Can you even hear me? Oh, right. My body's gone! My soul can escape! Please! You have to let me go! Let me go! I'm trapped here! Let me die! I have to die! Kill me! Somebody! Anybody! Kill me! Kill me! Kill me! Jesus, this kid's lost it. Hey! Somebody get that scalpel away from him! Good. 
Thanks, whoever that was. Quark barely even seemed to notice the loss of the scalpel. He continued to scream and writhe like he was possessed. What are we going to do? We've got to calm him down somehow. Luna. Yes? Are there any tranquilizers in here? No. Well, I mean... What? They're super L beta. Super L? That's the anesthetic. The one that's in our bracelets. Good. Perfect. Hit him with some of that. What? He'll be fine. It's just an anesthetic, Tenmyoji. It won't hurt him, I promise. But... Just hurry up and do it! Come on, Luna! Okay, let me just... Okay, I've got it. Good. Wait until he's... Now! Do it now! Right. No! Stop! Well, that's been taken care of. <sighs> Respiration, blood pressure, brain waves, everything's normal. According to these readings, he's in a very deep sleep. All right. I guess we're good for now. Yes. What about the anesthetic? How long will it last? He shouldn't wake up for a few hours. Man, he sure was strong for such a little guy. I think that might be the virus's fault. It probably attacks the part of the brain that governs reason. Without anything to hold it back, his body was using every ounce of strength it had. Yeah? How do you know? Huh? Oh, well, um... How much do you know about this Radical Six? Oh, not much. I probably know about as much as you do. All I've seen about it is that newspaper article. Isn't that the truth? Why would I lie about that? I've seen other viruses do the same thing. I was just making a guess. So when Park tried to kill himself, are you saying that was because of Radical Six too? Yes. At least, I think so. So what kind of virus is Radical Six? What are you doing? I turned and followed Tenmyoji's gaze. Oh. There stood Alice, her hand wrapped tightly around the scalpel. Apparently she had been the one to take it away from Quark. The longer I looked at her, however, the more I wondered if she'd taken it to protect him, or for some other, more sinister reason. She didn't seem... stable. In fact, she looked far more like Quark had a moment ago than I was entirely comfortable with. Her eyes were flat and hollow. Her face was an emotionless mask. She was not well. Alice? Hey, are you feeling okay? We're all going to die. Huh? We don't know how he got infected, just that he did. We're all dead already. Only terrorists would resort to biological warfare. But they will. Soon. Uh, hey, what the hell are you talking about? You don't understand? All of humanity is going to die. The virus will spread. Adults. Children. Everyone. Everyone! There won't be anyone left! I... I'd rather die here! Wait! Alice! We were all too stunned to even try to restrain her. We just stood there as she spun around and leapt through the door. Damn it! I shook myself and took off after her. But those few moments of hesitation had put too much distance and too many doors between us. Shit. Which way did she go? Right? Left? I was still trying to decide when everyone else poured out of the infirmary. We lost her. Yeah. I don't know which way she went. Well, let's split up and look. Quickly. She can't have gotten too far. Right. 
Look, if you find her, it's probably best not to shout or anything. Just do your best not to provoke her. Understood? Gotcha. Ten Mioji. I think you should stay here with Quark. The rest of us can look for Alice. Sound good? Yeah. I stay here. Got it. All right, let's move, people. Get going. At Fi's command, we scattered, filtering off into the different doors. As I ran, I thought, where should I look for Alice? Perhaps the lounge would be a good bet. No one here, huh? Damn. Where did she go? Complaining wasn't gonna help anything. I needed to go look somewhere else. It did. It it did. <laughs> Shoot. Nothing in the treatment center either. We need to find her quick, or she's gonna do something bad. If we hadn't stopped Quark. I need to hurry. I headed to the garden next. I'd only gone a few steps from the walkway through the grass when I stopped short. Alice! Oh, there you are. Good. I'm glad you showed up. Huh? I just got here a minute ago. She was like this when I found her. When you showed up, I was getting ready to carry her to the infirmary. Then she's, uh, alive? Yeah. Her breathing and pulse seem normal. She doesn't appear to have any obvious external wounds. So she's just unconscious. Looks like it. What about the scalpel? Doesn't look like she has it. Figure she probably dropped it on the way here. Hmm. Anyway, we need to get her to the infirmary. Give me a hand here. Uh, right. I've never seen Gimme with an IE at the end. That's an interesting way of spelling Gimme, Fi. I usually just do the E. Alice was lighter than I'd expected, and Fi and I managed to set off toward the infirmary at a brisk trot. Alright, please pay attention, everyone. You need to hear this. The Atom has finished scanning Alice. What did it say? Her results are identical to Quark's. She has also been infected with Radical Six. <laughs> she learned at the Dono University, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On our way back, Phi had gone off to retrieve the rest of the participants. Seven sets of eyes widened as Luna spoke. Oh no, no, what's going to happen to her? Well, like I said before, there's only one way to cure Radical Six. There's a special antiviral treatment. 
Do you know what immunoglobulin is? Immunoglobulin? It's another name for antibodies. Immunoglobulin. Some people have antibodies that can fight off Radical Six. Those antibodies are the basis for Excelivir. Stop smiling, Clover. <laughs> no, she can't stop, and she won't stop. Wait, what about those pods in the treatment center? Uh, can't we just stick them in those? Right. I thought of that too, so I went and took a closer look at them. Unfortunately... They can't cure it. Correct. Dio fought shadows alongside a goblin once? He did. <laughs> they can suppress the symptoms for a while. But His name wasn't Dio, but, you know... Same difference. <laughs> the only way we can help Alice and Quark is if we can find some Excelivir. But the pods will keep them from getting any worse, right? Yes. Well, then what are we waiting for? One of you, grab Alice. We're going to the treatment center. As he spoke, Tenmyoji moved over to Quark and lifted his small, unconscious body off the bed. Quark shifted slightly as Tenmyoji moved him, and something fell out of his pocket with a soft clink. I bent down slowly and picked it up. Is this... medicine? What? Well, what is it? Hold on. There's a name on the label here. Axel... Excel of Excelivir! You found it, Sigma! That's the one thing that can cure Radical Six! It was in Quark's pocket! Uh, why did Quark have it? Perhaps he found it earlier. Earlier when? We explored the laboratory. It was on the other side of the red door. I happened to notice Quark putting something in his pocket. He hid it? Whether or not that was his intention is unclear. I did not have the opportunity to ask, as he collapsed immediately afterwards. It didn't feel appropriate to go digging around in his pockets for it after that. And to be honest, it had also slipped my mind. We were rather preoccupied with getting him to the infirmary as quickly as possible. Who cares about the details? We have it. Hurry up and give it to him, Luna. Hey, hold on a minute. What about Alice? Does it really matter if she goes first or not? Um... I'm sorry, but I don't think we can do that. What? There's only enough here for one person. The only way we have to administer this is with the injection gun. And the way it functions, it uses a whole bottle each time you pull the trigger. In other words, we can't split the dose in two or something. Right. While we all stood stunned, Vi moved. Stepping over to Quark, she quickly ran her hands through his clothes, then stepped back with a frown and a small shake of her head. Nothing. That one bottle was it. Do you think there might be some more back in the laboratory? No. Unfortunately not. No. Oh god. Just enough medicine for one dose. Only one person can be saved. Who should we give it to? Alice? Or Quark? What the hell is this? There's no way we're only going to save one of them. And what are we going to do? Do I have to spell it out? We're going to save them both. How? That's... Um... I needed to calm down. Think. There had to be some way to save both of them. It was there. I knew it. IG. Immunoglobulin. Oh, hey, because we did this in the right order, we already have- This would be a lockdown, by the way, but because we did a thing earlier in a different timeline, I think specifically what? it'll show me. Yeah, it was, um... It's this one, I think. Yeah, it's this. When we went through the red door with Dio and Clover. Immunoglobulin is? It's another name for antibodies. Some people have antibodies that can fight off Radical Six. IG Replicator? Replicator makes it sound like it makes copies of stuff. So it's like a copy machine? Yeah. Probably copies IG, or whatever that is. Who knows? Any ideas? Who knows? Who knows? Ice cream by the gallon?
Instagram. <laughs> That's it. I've got it! The IG replicator in the laboratory. It's an immunoglobulin replication machine. Uh, what? It can copy immunoglobulin. Antibodies! You literally made that joke before. We've... It's been a week. It's been two, actually. Luna just said Excelivir is made from antibodies. That means we can make more Excelivir. Hold on a moment. There is a strange device in the laboratory that says IG Replicator on it. Clover and I examined it thoroughly when we were in that room. Yeah, we never could figure out what it did, though. Exactly. My question is, how do you know about it, Sigma? I saw it. When I was in the lab... Laboratory. When was that? Um... Probably when you were looking for Alice, right? Alright, YouTubers that watch my VODs, comment the timestamp of the previous one where Instagram was the joke for the IG replicator. <laughs> Whichever that one that one was. I believe in you. Confuse the people in chat. Don't even give, give- Confuse everybody else until they get to this point. Just all, all the comments. Flood the comments with just the timestamp as it timestamps to a random point in the video. <laughs> Come on, YouTube. You got this. <laughs> no. Dio was wrong. I hadn't gone to the laboratory when I was looking for Alice. I didn't think I'd ever been to the laboratory. So how did I know about the IG replicator? If what he's saying is true, then we should be able to duplicate the Excelivir. That we believe in your tube of views. <laughs> hmm. Fuck yeah, let's go! Let's go have a look then. The laboratory, right? Yeah, no time to waste. We all nodded. Wait. We can't leave them here all alone. Luna, do you think you could stay behind and look after them? Oh, of course. It's not even a joke you're particularly proud of. I mean... the I feel like the banger of this stream was more Dio because of the Tales of Asperia stream being before it. I'd be happy to. Unless you make one that's even better, I think that's the one of the day. <laughs> and my, uh, word of the day is, uh, architecture. What was the Dio joke? A character in Tales of Asparia's full name is Rita Mordio. M-O-R-D-I-O. <laughs> but it reads like more Dio. <laughs> oh god, that poor character. <laughs> Can they legally change their name for free? I don't know. I think it's a little late at this point. <laughs> so this is the lab, huh? Yes. Where's this IG replicator thing? Right here. See? So this can copy the Excelivir? I think so. What are we waiting for? Calm down, all right? Don't rush me. I carefully lowered the small vial of Excelivir into the slot on the side of the machine. So that's how they made Dio's. They made more Dio's. <laughs> I don't know if it'll work like that. An empty vial already protruded from the other side. Presumably that was where the duplicated Excelivir would go. Ready? When I push this button, it should- Skip it. Just press the damn thing. Right. And... Pressed. D 
Did it work? Have a look. The empty vial has something in it now. And the vial Sigma used remains as it was. It does not seem to have lost any of its contents. So, it worked? Would have been pretty bad if it hadn't. Alright, let's get this thing back to the infirmary. I reached down and pulled both vials from the machine, intending to slip them deftly into my pocket. Ah, shit. What happened? Uh, sorry, my hand slipped. You dropped one of them? Y yeah. Just one, though. What in the hell? What if you'd broken it, you idiot? Come on. If it'd broken, then we could have just made another copy. Four time Miyoji could reply if I spoke. Uh, guys? I'm surprised to hear her voice coming from near my feet. I looked down to see her staring intently at something beneath the table. You see? It did break! No, the vial's fine. The person who invented the clone machine only needs one customer and they're set for life because every clone will want one too. <laughs> See? She held it up in one hand, but didn't move her eyes. Then what the heck is going on down there? Take a look. She slid back from the table, quickly and silently. The rest of us bent down to look. A, a bomb? Whoa. Really? That makes two, then. I guess Kay was right after all. So there were more bombs. So it would seem. Was this here when you guys came through the first time? No, it was not. Yeah, I didn't see anything, and I looked real hard. Then somebody must have said it while we were looking for Alice. Who the hell would do that? We were all out looking for Alice. It could have been any of us. No, not any of us. I was back in the infirmary. Quark was still out, so I was keeping an eye on him. So we shouldn't consider you a suspect, is that right? Yeah, Quark's off the list too. But Tenmyoji, you have no proof that you spent the entire time in the infirmary, do you? What? You could have quietly made your way to the laboratory, planted the bomb- That's insane! Listen to yourself! There's no way in hell I'd have left Quark all by himself to go plant a goddamn bomb! Tenmyoji was still staring furiously at Kay when Clover spoke up. Hey, what's this thing? I turned in time to see her grab something from under the table. It looks like a... memory card. Where was it? Um, right under the bomb. It was down on the floor under the table. Could it have been put here by the same person who set the bomb? There was nothing like it here when we examined this room. Do you think they dropped it accidentally? Unless it was left here intentionally, yes. I imagine so. What do you think's on it? Let's take a look. Could I see it for a minute? Yeah, I guess so. Eats it. Hmm, <laughs> yes, I see. It seems to be about plastic. <laughs> and everyone looks at him. <laughs> it wasn't that funny, but for some reason it made me smile. <laughs> Shoot. No dice. We'll need to plug it into something that can read memory cards, but I don't see anything here. So what do we do? Come on, if I knew, I'd be doing it. Ten minutes remain. Until Ambidex game polling closes. All players, please enter your votes. If no vote is recorded before the deadline has passed, any non-voting parties will automatically ally. Uh, guys, I think maybe we should get back to the top floor. Yeah, you're right. We've got what we came here for. Um, what should we do about the, uh... Bomb. Not much we can do except leave it here. Alice said it'd be dangerous to touch them. True, but... Drop it. We can talk about the bombs later. Right now we need to take care of Alice and Quark. Right. So we'll go back to the infirmary, give them the Excelivir, then head to the Floor A warehouse. Right. This ought to do it. It might take a little while, but they should recover. <laughs> Ah!
days. Thank you for the five tier one gift subs. <laughs> they went to Crypt the Shrimp, Mad Theta, Day Nightfall, British Ronin, and Mexolidian. Uh, everyone who got a gift sub, enjoy your emotes. <laughs> Thank you, Days. That's very nice of you. Her voice was quiet as she backed away from Alice and Quark. <laughs> yes. You can now use Yay and Val in other chats. Let's go! <laughs> in her hand was the injection gun. She carefully removed the empty vial and placed it gently in the cabinet with the other one. While we were in the laboratory, Luna had moved Quark to a crude cot. They both looked peaceful as they slept. The madness I'd seen on their faces before was completely gone. Hell yeah, all the emotes, let's go! Are they really going to be all right? Yes, the analysis I did on the files confirmed that the duplicate was real Excelivir. Yes, Zidaku love. The original was genuine, too, of course. Now that they've been treated... It's only a matter of time before the virus is eliminated. I believe so, yes. Oh, man. What a relief. <laughs> I was really worried. Clover grinned. <laughs> Agreed. I gave her a reassuring pat on the back. Five minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. All right, everybody. We can be relieved later. Right now, we need to get to the AB rooms and fast. Damn. Don't even have time to catch our breath. Come on, let's go. The Floor A warehouse is waiting. Accept this heart, damn it, and you will like it. You have no choice. <laughs> huh? Where's Tenmyoji? Oh, he stayed back in the infirmary. What? Why? Well, when we were all heading out, I noticed he wasn't doing anything. So I asked him if he was coming with us, and this is what I got. I'm still worried about Quark and Alice. I think I'll stick around and make sure they're okay. I see. That means that Phi's only opponent will be Dio. One-on-one, -on -one, huh? Ugh. That's cool. Nothing to worry about. I plan to choose Ally. You know why? Because I've only got one BP. Exactly. If you chose ally and I betrayed you, your BP would drop below zero and... <laughs> Stayed well, back? We know what happens Gross. then. Why? <laughs> I want to win, but I'm not that desperate. You see what I'm saying, right? <laughs> Tenmyoji and Dio are a pair. Tenmyoji only had one BP left. Since Dio said he's going to pick an ally, Fi can't really pick anything else. If she does, Tenmyoji will... Um... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Kay and I are going to be going one-on-one, -on -one too, right? Since Quark's still sleeping. That is correct. How many BP do you guys have? I've got six. As do I. This will be a tough one, then. If one of them can get the other to ally, and then betray that person, the betrayer will have nine points. Look, Kay. I know you don't really have any reason to trust me, but... I know. You would like us both to vote ally, yes? I yeah I agree. If we were to both betray, then we would gain no points. We would lose nothing either, but that's hardly relevant. If both of us cooperate, then we will both gain two points, which is- Right! Oops, okay, sorry! Good. <laughs> You're really gonna do it, right? Yes. Promise? Promise.
One minute remains until Ambidex game polling closes. Ugh. Shit, this is bad. We need to move now. Indeed. Shall we? You like Dragon Quest VIII, but the 3DS port leaves a lot to be desired. Aw. Dang. DOK, Fi, and Clover all took off immediately, heading into different AB rooms. Counting from the left, Dia went into room 3, K went into room 4, and Fi and Clover went into rooms 5 and 6, respectively. That left Luna and myself. What do you think about taking the one on the far left? Sounds good. With that settled, we headed into AB room number one. Fix the audio mixing. Yeah, I'm actually about to- I was about to ask, is it Dragon Quest the game where the- the head developer, like, hates his western audience, so he intentionally makes sure that the western releases use MIDI files? I remember there's a game out there where the developer is, like, the head guy intentionally, for whatever reason, just has something. That sounds hilarious and disappointing all at once. Yeah. I think it's Dragon Quest. Yes, that's right! Yep, it's- it's Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest releases outside of Japan intentionally are programmed where the audio is MIDI, but Dragon Quest music is intended to be orchestral. <laughs> I remember because somebody- I was watching a YouTube video that wasn't even about the game and it came up in conversation and the dude just went off on this huge rant about it. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds like- that's bullshit. Because it is. But it's true. It's just bullshit. It's like, are you serious? <laughs> Why? <laughs> 30 seconds. No, he doesn't really- I mean, as far as anyone's aware, he doesn't really have a reason to. Some people, I think- I think it said somebody- I think the West is, like, more critical of his games. So he was like, fine, Seven's gonna be- Seven is gonna have MIDI files, and then people complained about the audio, and so it's like, ever since Dragon Quest Seven the uh, Western release of the game has used the- has used MIDI for audio instead of the original orchestral. Um, it's it's such a, a dumb insane. and incredibly petty reason, but... You know Alice is still in the infirmary, so... <laughs> You're saying we should pick Ally, right? All you know is about Seven is that it's like 100 hours long for story mode with no extras. Oh, that's a long game. But yeah, there's there's a number of discussion boards about it. <laughs> about the, why why does Dragon Quest XI have only MIDI files? And somebody's like, because, because the director said they don't deserve the original better quality. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. Yes. I know. It's not really fair to betray somebody who isn't voting. Luna's face broke into a warm, happy smile. Not to be sappy, but it was like a ray of sunshine on a cloudy day. I grinned back at her before I knew what I was doing. For a minute, the nonary game didn't seem so scary. Ten seconds remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Nine, eight, 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The only, the only one I'll get. Round two of the Ambidex game has been completed. You played the dynasty, the second Dynasty Warriors spinoff. It was the most annoying difficulty spikes ever. You quit at the final boss. Dang. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Thank you for your participation. Ambidex gates. Now opening. Luna and I stepped out of the AB room. All right, let's go have a look at the results. What? Okay. <laughs> let's have a look at the results. I don't know why I said it like that. Results from round two of the Ambidex game will now be displayed. Please direct your attention to the results screen. It whoops. Points have been assigned or subtracted accordingly. Please check your bracelet to see your updated bracelet points. What? It wasn't possible. I blinked, rubbed my eyes, and looked again. No. That's... That's not possible. How can Alice's vote be betrayed? It was a question I would never know the answer to. There was a sharp, quick pain in my wrist, barely even noticeable. I couldn't feel anything flowing into my veins, but I knew it was there. First would be the anesthetic soparil. I blinked, and my vision started to blur. When I tried to think, it felt like my mind had been stuffed with cotton. My legs began to wobble, then gave out entirely as I crumpled to the floor. Sigma! Sigma! Hang on! Oh no! Sigma! Get up! Sigma! Sigma! No! Why? My eyelids felt like they were made of lead, but I forced them open. Everything was growing blurry, but I noticed that the door of the second AB room was... open. No one had gone into that room. I'd watched them all. And yet, there she stood. An apparition that couldn't possibly be real. Oh, this. The world was gradually going black, and my mouth refused to form words. But my head echoed with questions. How? Why? What was she doing there? Had she run in at the last moment, after Luna and I had entered our room? But even if she had... Why choose Betray? Then the darkness closed over my mind as well, and my questions were gone forever. Have I played any, um... Dragon Quest games? I have not. Game over! You're back, what happened? Oh, we died. <laughs> the only game over I'll get. Mostly because it's the only one you get by choosing ally. Like, I think it's just the only one you get by choosing ally. So we'll just go back and redo it. <laughs> 30 seconds remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Sorry, Luna. 
I'm just watching my back. <laughs> Luna and I stepped out of the AB room. Why? What happened to- It's not fair to betray someone who isn't voting. I thought- There was nothing I could think of to say. Even I didn't really understand why I had picked betray instead. It had almost felt... Unconscious. Like some other part of my mind was making the decision. Perhaps I'd been possessed by some sort of evil spirit that had moved my finger to the betray button against my will. R right Well, we should go see the results. Really? We already know what they are. It's just simple math. The look in her eyes was more painful than any punch I'd ever taken. I turned away and almost ran toward the projector. Anything to get away from those eyes. Results from round two of the Ambidex game will now be displayed. Please direct your attention to the results screen. Points have been assigned or subtracted accordingly. Please check your bracelet to see your updated bracelet points. What? It wasn't possible. I blinked, rubbed my eyes, and looked again. No. How can Alice's vote be betray? That's not possible. Uh, Alice. She was standing inside the second room from the left. The room that should have been empty. Why? My mind was still reeling. Where had she come from? As I was trying to form a sentence, she began to move toward us. From around me, I heard a chorus of muted gasps. It seemed we were it seemed we were united in our surprise and confusion. Alice drew to stop in front of me and glanced up at the display. Thought you'd get an easy couple points, huh? Not so easy when you have to look your victim in the eye, is it? Coward. Me a coward? You've got some balls saying that to me after you picked betray. Why are you even here? You gave me the antivirus, didn't you? Tenmyoji told me. Thank you. I mean that from the bottom of my heart, honestly. But you should still be under the effects of the anesthetic. Yes, well, I still am. A bit. I have a throbbing headache, and I can barely stand. It's horrible. I'm more resistant to anesthetics than most people. A result of my training. I have a feeling Zero Senior knew that. They gave me way more than the standard dose of that gas when they kidnapped me. In any event, a few minutes ago I woke up in the infirmary. Tenmyoji explained what was going on and I got here as fast as I could. So you showed up right after we'd gone into the AB room? Yes. Right in the nick of time, too. About ten seconds before the deadline, as I recall. You did that just so you could betray us? Right. What? Don't I get to do that? I mean, it turned out to be the right thing to do, didn't it? You two chose Betray. If I'd stayed back there, I'd have lost two points. So, you're saying it was self-defense? Yes. You're full of shit. Self-defense, my ass. You chose Betray because you wanted out. You had six BP. If I'd picked Ally, you would have had nine. That's what you were trying to do, right? So what if I was? Are you serious? You would have killed me! Look, I only have one BP. You were this close to murdering me. Just admit it. You were planning to kill me so you could escape. <laughs> Don't be stupid. I knew you'd choose Betray. There was... Tell the truth. That is the truth. Why am I the only one getting the third degree here? Look at those results. Two other people just tried to kill someone. Fi and Dio. Yes. 
If Dia had chosen ally, Phi would have killed Ten Miyoji. And if she'd chosen ally, Dia would have killed her. I don't want to be rude, but it looks like Clover and Kay tried to trick one another. Not that it seems to have worked. If either one had chosen ally, the other one would have 9 BP right now. Dragon Quest Swords? Ah. I turned, to re I turned to look at the results again. Before, I'd only been looking at my own. I hadn't realized that there was only one word all across the roster. Betray. Whatever trust we'd managed to build had fallen apart. Everyone was suspicious of everyone else. Had it been the bombs? Or had it been something else? Whatever the reason, if it kept up, we'd never manage to escape. We'd be trapped in a cycle of zero-point rounds for the rest of our lives. Something had to be done. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. Alright guys, pay attention. You've probably already all figured this out, but we can't keep going like this. If we don't start being a little more trusting, we're never gonna get out of here. We need to work together. Zero point dilemmas, yeah. I might as well have been talking to a wall. My apologies, Sigma, but I need to think on something for a bit. I would appreciate being left alone. Kay. I'll be leaving too. Things are getting a little too intense here for my delicate constitution. Sorry. Dio. Well, in that case... A two, Fi? Yeah, sorry. Without another word, she turned and left the warehouse. How is RE4 on the Wii? <laughs> Dio and Kay quickly followed suit. See? There's your answer. In the end, everyone's just thinking about themselves. So I would appreciate it if you could not treat me like I'm the only villain here. Come on, Clover. Let's go. Hold on! I'm coming! Are you feeling okay? I was really worried, you know? I watched them walk away, Clover practically jumping with delight to have Alice back. Before long, they reached the yellow door and disappeared beyond it. Everyone's gone. You... aren't going to leave, too? No. Are you sure? I chose Betray. I know, but I still believe in you, Sigma. I think your hand must have just slipped or something, right? My chest hurt, and when I blinked, I felt something hot and wet prick the corners of my eyes. Luna, I... I bit my lip. Before I could think of anything to say, the metallic rumble of the doors closing echoed through the warehouse. The Ambidex Gates have closed. Round three of the Ambidex Game will be the Star Round. Star Keys are required to open the gates. <laughs> Just want to make sure your RE4 is Wii version and not GameCube. Both will work, but different control. <laughs> Was RE4 on the GameCube? There is no set limit. On usage of the star keys. I just, I can't imagine how that controls. Like, I know I think it's motion controls, which is so... Help. <laughs> That's such a scary thing. I know it's a third-person shooter, but, uh... <laughs> the Ambidex gates can be opened as many times as the players wish to open them. As many times as we want, huh? Yes, as long as we have the star keys. Before being ported to PS2 and then every other console? Huh! It was originally on the GameCube. Interesting. That means we can keep playing the AB game over and over, too. Um, Sigma? Could you show me your bracelet? Why? Do you remember what Zero Jr. said? As soon as the gates close, Mr. Colors get all shot. Automatically. The pair is so well assigned to stop around a bit, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I like how they had like five million different reads for that one line when in reality, Zero the Third only says it once and only in one way. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Um, let's see here. I'm a cyan pair. What about you? I'm a magenta pair. I wonder what the others are. We could be anything, I suppose. We won't know until we have a look. Hmm. We've got about... 80 minutes until the next set of chromatic doors open. So, what should we do now? Everyone else has gone off on their own. Yeah. Physically and emotionally. I really don't like how this is going. It won't matter how many times we repeat the AB game if nobody trusts anybody else. We'll never be able to get out of here. Maybe it would help if we all had a common goal. Something to unite our hearts and minds. Yeah, but we've already got something like that. We all want to get out of here. That seems like a pretty clear goal to me. But everybody chose Betray. Including me. Well, what if we have an enemy? An enemy? Yes. A common foe. Like the person who set the bombs, for instance. After coming back from the lab, I told her about the bomb while she gave Alice and Quark the Accelivir. Hmm. Ah! Hmm, yeah, that might work. If we can figure out which one of us planted those bombs, then everyone else would work together against them. Right. But how do we figure out who it is? Well, do you have any clues? Um, hmm, clues, huh? That's right! The memory card! I pulled it out of my pocket and held it out to order. What's this? I told you, a memory card. It was under the bomb we found in the lab. I think whoever set the bomb dropped it. Really? Yeah. I don't know what's on it, though. We couldn't find any kind of memory card reader. Oh, I guess we can't really use it, then. Oh, wait a second. You know what? I think I might have seen something... Huh? Yes, I remember. The infirmary. I saw it when I was searching the infirmary with Dio and Quark. There was a memory card just like that one. Then... Yes! I think we can see what's on it. The computer there should be able to read it. Luna and I exploded into the infirmary, nearly running into Alice, Clover, and Ted Mioji. Quark was still there, of course, but he was just as we'd left him, asleep on the bed. What are you doing here? I opened my mouth to retort, then thought better of it. If I really wanted people to start trusting each other, well, real change starts at home. As quickly as I could, I explained the second bomb in the memory card, and how we'd come to the infirmary in hopes that we could discover the contents of the latter. Okay. Then stick it in already! Go ahead. Right. And it wasn't even for that long before PS4 was out. I had Wii when it was out, and then I got the Wii U. I got the PS3 after the PS4, and then I got the PS4 a little bit later. Xbox One was a more recent affair, and I think it was almost... I want to say it was just before the PS5 and Xbox Series X had been announced. Twilight Princess and Paper Mario. Big recommends for Twilight Princess. That's a good Zelda game. Uh, depending on which Paper Mario it is, if it's Thousand Year Door, that's a really, really good one. People like that one the most. But I think Super Paper Mario is pretty good. Couldn't tell you anything about Sticker Star or the other one that I don't even remember the name of. But I think Super Paper Mario is the Wii one. The one on the Wii. And Sticker Star is 3DS. Oh. Just as Luna had said, there was a small slot under the screen, exactly the right size to fit a memory card. Within moments, the screen was filled with what appeared to be random letters. Oh, wh 
What is this? Hmm. Six rows, 22 letters each. It looks like the odd rows use one set of letters, and the even rows use another set. In other words, the first two rows just repeat. Yeah. Is this some kind of code or something? It doesn't look random to me. I think there might be a pattern. I just don't know what it is. Was there anything else on there? No, it doesn't look like it. So all we get is this gibberish. Played some Animal Crossing, it was okay. It's a fun little idle game. I think it lived... It, the Animal Crossing series lives its best life on the handhelds. Which is why... Uh, New Leaf and uh, the one on the Switch did really well for a while. But it's def- I don't know how people keep up with it. I wasn't able to. And also a lot of people time-traveled. <laughs> hey Alice, you haven't said anything for a while. What's up? Does any of this look familiar to you, Clover? Um, what do you mean? Have you seen something like this before? Maybe during your training? Training? Oh, this is... So you do recognize it. All right, knock it off, you two. How about you share it with the rest of the class? Alice sighed and stretched her neck from side to side. I believe this is an encoded message from a terrorist organization. What? They call themselves the Myrmidons. Hmm, where have we heard that? <laughs> Myrmidons. For some reason, I felt like I'd heard that name before. What are the Myrmidons? Put simply, they're a bunch of thugs who are trying to destroy or dismantle most of human civilization. So this thing we're looking at... Tales of Symphonia. <laughs> if you can get your hands on the GameCube version of Tales of Symphonia... You think it's theirs? Well, they have a number of different Because codes, it's the only game, it's the only them. iteration of the of that game in existence that runs at 60 FPS. <laughs> PS3 is probably cheaper and easier to get. This is true. That's and the new one on the Switch and the PS5 and Xbox Series X are probably the most accessible, but also, do you want to spend $60? If you're gonna- if you're worried about, like, cost efficiency, the Steam version is definitely the best one to choose, because it's only, like, $10, and it can go on sale, and often does, pretty frequently, and not for, like, an insignificant percent off, either. One dollar per frame per second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't get into them? Yeah, I have, um... What are they called? Rune Factory, which is the same, uh, group or development group as Harvest Moon, but similarly to Stardew Valley has combat. Than the bomb? But Rune Factory is definitely more combat oriented because there's different t uh, weapon types and abilities and stuff like that. That's not how math works, but it sounds funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was said by one of the Myrmidons, wasn't it? Yes. Well, I can't say for sure, of course, but it seems likely. Uh, damn, I have got a ton of questions for you. Aw, four is probably, like, the most fun one, though. Unfortunate. <laughs> I plan to play it on stream eventually. Um, it does- the Rune Factory games just have a really long prologue. It's kind of, like- It's honestly, like, a good portion of JRPGs. Some start super slow. Super slow. Ugh. So let me start with this one. Uh, what the heck does that thing say? I don't know. What? How am I supposed to decode it? I don't have the key. Without a key, it would take literally hundreds of years to decode. What about you, Clover? But I have four on the Switch, so it's like the de 
definitive edition of sorts, I suppose. And then, um... Tides of Destiny, which was on the Wii. That one's a... Mm, that one's not a very good one, but I liked it. <laughs> well, if Alice doesn't know how, it has I some sure don't. funky mechanics that make it really hard to get through at times. <laughs> I see. Hmm. Not much we can do then. We can come back to that code stuff later. Uh, I'm sorry. Never mind. Read that differently, please, me? Okay, we can come back to that code stuff later. I've got another question. Alice? Clover? Who the hell are you? Why do you know about this code? That's... You told me your job was to eliminate enemies of the state, or something like that. Just what the hell kind of job is that? I think it's time you told us what you do. Sorry, but I can't. Why not? Because you might be one of them. You might be the person who set the bomb. That's idiotic! Of course I'm not- Really? And where's your proof? For all I know, you're my enemy. I can't tell you anything. I'm not your enemy. I'm your ally. I'm your friend. I just want all of us to get out of here. Just... Please, tell us. Please. We need to find out who did this so we can all escape. But we have too little information. We need your help. Fine. If you won't tell us about yourself, then just tell us about the Myrmidons. What else do you know about them? I'm sorry. Before I could blink, she'd leapt up and run out of the room. Hey, wait! Alice! I took off after her. How long are you going to keep following me? Until you tell me what you know. Then why don't you just ask Clover? Clover? You already know she works with me. Well, yeah. Then why don't you... I wanted to hear it from you. Why? That's a good question. Remember the crew quarters? Or this garden? We got paired up for two separate rounds. That means I've spent more time with you than anybody else here. Maybe that's it. I guess I'm just curious about you. What are you talking about? She spun around to hide it, but I caught a blush of red on her cheeks. We walked down the path to where it ended next to the pond. I stayed silent. Alice sat down on the bench. We gazed at the smooth surface of the pond for several long minutes before she began to speak. You don't hate me? What? Why? I... I tried to kill you. You mean in the AB game? Yes. I was so scared. Who wouldn't be? Kidnapped and locked up, forced to play some sort of bizarre game. And then we found that bomb. I know I probably sounded calm, but as soon as we found that thing, all I wanted to do was run away from it as fast as I could. Things just went downhill from there. What do you mean? I remember hearing that Quark had collapsed and running to the infirmary with everyone else. When I got there, I realized I couldn't understand what anyone was saying. And everything looked... I don't know how to describe it. It was like watching a video on Fast Forward, only it was real. Then I started to feel like... It's hard to explain. I guess you could say I didn't feel like I was myself, and it only got worse. That was probably the Radical Six. Yes, I think so. I don't remember much after that. But when I woke up in the infirmary, suddenly all that fear was back. So I... All I could think about was getting out of this place as fast as I could. It never even crossed my mind that it could kill you. God help me, it, even if it had, I don't think I would have cared. See? I'm horrible. You hate me, don't you? Just do it! What? Do what? Kill me! Get it over with! What the hell, Alice? I'm not going to kill you. I don't even hate you. You're lying! I could have killed you. I 
I would have killed you. <laughs> Come on, calm down. No one's killing anyone. A single tear rolled down Alice's cheek. Then another, and another, leaving shining lines across her face. When I reached out, I saw her tense just slightly. Slowly, I brushed my thumb across her cheek and off, taking her tears with it. Why are you doing this? You know, you kind of remind me of my father. That's who you were after, right? The people who killed your dad? Yes. Did they have anything to do with the Myrmidons? Will you promise not to tell Clover that I cried? Ha! <laughs> Come on! If you keep your mouth shut, I'll tell you what you want to know. About myself, and about the Myrmidons. Deal? Sure. My lips are sealed. Really? What? What crying? I don't remember any crying. Good. Alright then. Alice took a deep breath and began. My father is Egyptian, but my mother is French. They met while my mother was in Egypt on vacation and married shortly thereafter. When I was three, we all moved to the U.S. My father was a scientist, and his field was cloning. He was recruited by an American lab, which is why we moved. Both of my parents had used English around me from the time I was born, so I didn't have any problems adapting to life in the United States. By my ninth birthday, we'd been there for six years. That was when it happened. In the middle of the day, my mother showed up at school. Her eyes were red and puffy, but she didn't say anything to me on the drive home. When we arrived, there were several policemen there to meet us. My father had always been a very punctual man, and when dinner time came and went with no sign of him, even I began to realize something terrible had happened. It wasn't until several years later that I finally learned the truth. My father's lab had been attacked by terrorists, and he had been kidnapped. For the rest of my childhood, my mother raised me by herself. I didn't realize it then, but it must have been incredibly difficult for her, as a single mother alone in a country where any relatives were a transatlantic flight away. She did her best not to let me see it, but every so often when she thought she was alone, the mask would fall away, and in every line of her face I could see exhaustion and loneliness. As much as I missed my father, it was those moments that made me wish more than anything that he'd never been taken. Fortunately, I was an excellent student and did especially well in math. I learned a full I earned a full ride scholarship and straight out of high school and spent the next several years studying. After graduation, I took a job with the Department of Defense, hoping that they might have the resources to help me look for my father. I was immediately assigned to the Special Office of International or Internal Security, not International. Their purpose is to investigate, and sometimes deal with, terrorist organizations and other serious threats to the state. I could tell my mother wasn't happy about my decision, but she chose to remain silent about it. Eventually, I learned that the terrorist organization that had taken my father was none other than the Myrmidons. Although at the time, that name didn't mean anything to me. They were suspected of human cloning. Specifically, it was thought that they had been using cloning techniques to copy their most useful members and expand their ranks. The Myrmidons apparently believed that they could use cloning to create a new race of humans. Now, at last, I knew the reason for my father's abduction. The commander of the Myrmidons is a man named Left. We know his name and his gender, but not his appearance or his age. The Myrmidons are closely associated with a cult known as Free the Soul. We believe that Free the Soul provides their funding, but trying to pin any kind of misdeeds on the cult's leader, a man named Brother, is like trying to nail Jello to a wall. Brother is supposed to be fairly advanced in years, and rumors say he's so old he can't even get out of bed. Unfortunately, his mind seems to be as sharp as ever. At that point, I hit a wall. I knew the Myrmidons had been behind my father's kidnapping, but that was all I could learn about them. 
Then one day, I got a tip that some of them were hiding in a building in the Nevada desert. I headed out immediately. On the way there, my car had some engine trouble and stalled out. I was trying to decide what to do when an SUV appeared out of nowhere. I'll give you one guess who was behind the steering wheel. Clover. That was the first time we met. <laughs> you left out one important detail. <laughs> there were four other people in the car with her, and when I asked them what they were doing, I got, I got what was just about the last answer I'd expected. They told me they'd been locked up inside of the very building I'd been on my way to investigate, and that they were currently in pursuit of the people who had kidnapped them in the first place. My priorities shifted very quickly. After a short discussion, I convinced them to allow me to come along. My hope was to find the people they were chasing, who I was certain were Myrmidons. In the end, however, we were unable to track them down. In fact, I still don't know where they might have gone. Eventually, I took Clover and her companions to SOIS headquarters. We decided that involving the police would only complicate things. After some questioning, it was determined that the people who had instigated this particular event were not connected to the Myrmidons. We did, however, discover that the mysterious disappearance and subsequent reappearance of several children nine years prior was connected to Free the Soul. There was also a sixth person in the SUV, although they weren't riding in it per se. A middle-aged man, who I'll just call H for now, had been bound and placed in the trunk. According to the other four, he had been behind the disappearance of the children nine years earlier. We also learned that his pharmaceutical company, a major player on the world stage, was effectively controlled by Free the Soul. More specifically, I suppose, H was a member of Free the Soul, and very committed to their cause. So why had he kidnapped all those children? Apparently, it had been part of an experiment designed to test the ability of certain people to access what's called the morphogenetic field. I don't imagine you've ever heard of it before, so I'll try and give you a quick rundown. Simply put, these people can access a sort of field that allows their consciousness to resonate with the consciousnesses of certain other people. To be honest, it might be simpler to just call it telepathy. The SOIS had heard of this particular ability before, and had actually used it in a number of investigations, so I wasn't surprised to learn of its existence. I was shocked, however, to learn that these experiments had been carried out by a member of Free the Soul. If that was the case, then Brother must have known about it. The thought of him discovering a way to control and harness that power was terrifying. It wasn't too long after the incident in Nevada that another tip about the Myrmidons crossed my desk. This time it claimed that the Myrmidons intended to launch a large-scale biological terrorist attack. My bosses decided that we needed more agents to deal with a threat of that magnitude, and Clover was recruited. Because she'd been a test subject in H's experiment, we knew she had the ability to access the morphogenetic field, and we wanted to put that ability to use. After several months of training, she was sent on her first mission. She would be tasked with the infiltration and investigation of a Myrmidon cloning lab. I was assigned to be her commanding officer. I hoped that our investigation might also give me a lead on my father's whereabouts. At last, I had a chance to find out what had happened to him. I wouldn't let that chance pass me by. Perhaps that was what kept me from noticing the truth. The whole operation was a trap. The lab was fake, and Clover was captured almost immediately. I got there as fast as I could, but when I arrived, the building was only an empty shell. All of the conspirators who had pretended to be researchers and the like had already fled. I searched frantically for Clover until at last, in a basement room, I found her. She had been tied to a chair, but on the floor next to her was another body. It was my father. He looked as if he'd just been dumped there, and when I got to him, his body was already cold. He was covered in dark, ugly bruises. It wasn't until later that I learned he had died from ruptured organs and internal bleeding. They had beaten him to death. 
As soon as Clover had been captured, a Myrmidon in a mask had come to visit her. He'd said that unless she wanted to end up like my father, she would leave them alone, and tell her masters at the SOIS to do likewise. In retrospect, they must have known who I was and who my father was. That was why they killed him. Perhaps they thought they were sending a message to me. Or that once he was gone, I'd lose my reason for chasing them. They were very, very wrong. I took Clover with me and left. I tried to console myself with the fact that I had at least been able to save her. Sometime later, I received a call from the coroner. He told me there was something I needed to see. There in the morgue was my father, cold and pale on a steel table. I could barely stand to look at him, but the coroner insisted. On his arms were two rows of numbers, comprised of eights and nines. It took me a moment to recognize my father's handwriting. He had carved them into his own skin. On his chest was another message, but they were letters this time, not numbers. Not many, just enough to make a short sentence. I love you, Alice. I broke down crying right there in the morgue. And they were the first tears I'd shed since the operation had started. And there was no stopping them. There would be no forgiveness. Not for the monsters who'd put my father through this. They'd destroyed my family. I would make them pay, even if I had to die to do it. And that night, I made a promise to myself. I would avenge my father. It didn't take long to figure out that the numbers he'd written were latitude and longitude. They pointed to a chemical factory that had been disguised as an abandoned building. Further investigation revealed that it was the mother load we'd been looking for, the headquarters of the Myrmidons. I think my father must have known how things would turn out. Knowing he was going to die, he'd written the directions to our enemy's fortress on his own body. He'd sacrificed too much for me to waste this opportunity with recklessness. This time, our operation would succeed. This time, I wouldn't let my excitement put Clover or any of my other agents in danger. So we took our time, we gathered information, we did our research, and we planned. Finally, we were ready. December 25th, 2028 was going to be the day we finally set foot inside the Myrmidon stronghold. But then, on the 22nd, only three days before the operation was scheduled to begin, a man in a gas mask appeared. So you inhaled that gas, passed out, and woke up here in the A-B room? Yes. <laughs> Ugh, reading. Well, there it is. Everything that's happened with the Myrmidons and me. I left a few of the details out, of course, but you get the idea. Yeah, thanks. She gave me a sad sort of smile and stood up. We should go back. Hello! Hello, Lydian. Yes! Days dropped a... a couple of tier ones in here. Because he's awesome like that. <laughs> so yeah, enjoy your, enjoy your gift sub and your emotes. He is. <laughs> The real MVP, let's go. Not yet. Your story explained a lot, but there's still one big question. Which is? Who here is a Myrmidon? One of us planted the bombs. And based off the code we found, it's pretty clear that person is a Myrmidon. Right? Yes. And I agree that we need to figure out who they are. What do you propose we do? Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about. Do you have any clues? Clues? Hmm. Well, if I could decrypt that code, it might tell us something, but... How can we do that? I told you. We need a key. Without that, it's pointless. Mm, what's a key? A key is a key. It allows you to sort of unlock a code. 
Myrmidons usually use this huge string of numbers as a key. Wait. A long string of numbers? Could that be... Seven eight one five three six one zero nine eight eight three eight zero nine four two four one nine nine zero five five one. What the hell? I was almost as surprised as she was. The numbers had just kind of appeared in my mind, and I was saying them before I knew what I was doing. Hell yeah. Alice looked at me incredu incredulously, and I stared back. Where did- wait, can you say that again? Uh, seven eight one five three six one zero nine eight eight three eight zero nine four two four one nine nine zero five five one. That's one hundred ninety eight million four hundred forty nine thousand three hundred fifty one to the third power. What? That number you just told me. Prime factor decomposition on that number gets you one hundred and ninety. That's a lot of numbers. It is three hundred and fifty one to the third power. You're talking about reducing an integer to a series of prime numbers that you multiply together to get it, right? Like, if you have thirty, then you'd get two times three times five, right? Exactly. Yeah. Alice, however, is amazing at math. You probably learned that in junior high, right? So you're saying that that big ass number, 198,449,351 is a prime. And if you multiply it by itself three times, you'd get that. <laughs> yes. Don't tell me you just did all of that in your head. I did do all of that in my head. Simple mental arithmetic. <laughs> I love that sentence. <laughs> Simple mental arithmetic. What? No, no way. That's impossible. I told you, I'm better at math than most people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That's not better at math. Like, this is kid stuff, yeah. Also, hello, Ringo. <laughs> Look at you. You just <laughs> recited a huge string of numbers. That seems pretty astounding, too. Where did you find that number, anyway? I... I didn't know what to say. What would I tell her? That it just came to me? Can't tell me, huh? Fine. I'm pretty sure that's the key to the code, though. I know the Myrmidons use prime factors for their keys. And there aren't a lot of 25-digit numbers that turn out to be the third power of a prime number. I think there's a very good chance that number you memorized was specifically created by someone. Uh, uh... Could you explain that with... small words? Well, look at the prime factors of your number. 198,449,351 to the third power. I think that's our hint for cracking the code. Hmm? You still don't get it? Try to remember the code we saw in the infirmary. What did it say on the monitor? Um, I think the first row was... C-Q-U-J-H-N-M-T-E-O-N-E-R-A-X-D-F-M-I-O-V-P And the second row? Uh, B Y O L W X Y P X S V Z E Q G T K R T L E D. I think. Then they just repeat. Wow, you've got a pretty impressive memory. We could really use someone like you back at the. Um. Well, keep going. How do we decode that? You use 198,449,351 to point you to the right letters. How do we do that? Well, the first number is 1, so take the first letter. The next number is 9, so go 9 letters over from the first one. Then 8 from that one. Just keep going until you get something. Make sense? I ran over what she said in my head. The prime number Alice had given me was 198449351. So what would we get if we picked out letters like she'd explained? The first letter would be C from the top left. Then you'd move 9 to the right, which would give you O. Then 8 more to the right. Eventually we'd get a word. And that word was... Mm -hmm. 
yeah, <laughs> it's just trying to remind you, like, here's your thing, but don't forget. <laughs> but I wrote it down in my journal a long time ago. So let's flip to that page. Completed. Page flipping ASMR. Yes. I did it! Completed. That's it. That's the answer. Completed? Are you sure? Yeah. I did exactly what you told me to do, and the word I got is completed. Well, actually, it's completed, completed, completed. The code and the letters repeat every two lines. I just... it just repeats. Hmm. Well, I can't remember the code like you can, but if you're certain, I believe you. I'm definitely certain. All right, then. I wonder what completed is supposed to mean, though. What? Uh, aside from the obvious, you mean, right? Oh, yeah, fun fact. Um, Where's my memo? With that bomb password? I'm gonna do this when we have all three. You can uh, do the- you shift the letters around for these and they actually spell stuff. We'll do that uh, when we- when we get to it though. I'm guessing here it means mission complete. So that's what the transmitter was for. Huh? What are you talking about? What transmitter? I barely even heard her. Suddenly, my mind was full of memories that hadn't been there a moment before. It was like a wave had washed away the sand, revealing a bed of precious gems underneath. Dio? <laughs> Damn it! Why hadn't I realized it before? I could remember a series of numbers, but not this? At least I remembered it now. Dio was a member of the Myrmidons. And not just any member. He was their leader. That meant he had to be the one who'd planted the bombs. Hey, are you listening to me? Yeah. Then answer my question. What the hell was that? What's this about a transmitter? I didn't trust myself to try and explain it to her. More than likely, she'd just think I was insane. Even I could barely make sense of the sudden influx of new information. Wait. Don't tell me you're one of the Myrmidons. If I was, do you really think I'd reveal myself like this? Point. Out of nowhere, Clover appeared. Looking all over for you. Really? We're all down in the Floor B warehouse. Well, all of us but Luna and Quark. Why? We've still got 45 minutes until the white doors open. I know that. Oh, uh, okay. Hey, wait a minute. I thought UK and Quark didn't know about the white doors. Tenmyoji told us about them. He said he'd show us where they were, so we all followed him down to the- <laughs> You like her hair. House. She has nice hair. I'm assuming you left Quark with Luna? Yeah. Anyway, when we showed up, Phi and Kay were already there. So? Well, all of a sudden, Phi, Tenmyoji, and Dio all started yelling at each other. Why? Why? Did something happen? According to Clover, the last AB game had been the cause of their fight. Even though Tenmyoji had only had one BP, Fai had chosen Betray. 
They started to fight, and since Neo had pressed betray on behalf of his team, eventually he got dragged in too. That seems odd. Fi only had one BP too. Her choice seems like a perfectly valid defensive move. Ugh, just come with me. Kay's trying to calm them down, but there's only one of him. Okay, okay. Come on, Alice, let's go. Coming. All four of them were still there when we arrived. They seemed to have calmed down a bit, but the tension in the air was almost visible. I felt like I'd stepped into a room full of flammable gas. Even the smallest spark could turn the whole place into a raging inferno. Even Kay, usually so calm and collected, was standing ramrod straight with his hand balled into a fist at his side. I looked at Alice, pursed my lips, and then headed over to the angry knot of people a copy- uh, a co Occupying most of the room. Words! They are difficult. Clover told me what's going on. This whole thing is stupid. You need to knock it off. Stupid? What about this is stupid? We're talking about my life, you self-righteous dick. I know. But yelling at each other isn't going to solve your problem. The best thing for us to do right now is to trust each other and get through this. Wouldn't you agree? Hmm. Hard to trust someone who tried to kill me. Same to you. I told you letting Dio vote was a stupid idea. What did you think he was gonna do? You might as well have pressed the button yourself. I couldn't just leave Quark alone. That's no excuse. And where do you get off telling me I shouldn't have picked Betray? Did you even think that through? What, I was supposed to pick Ally? If I'd done that, I'd be dead right now. I could say the same thing to you. Damn good thing Dio didn't choose Ally. Please, that's enough from both of you. Sickness right. This isn't the time to be bickering with each other. Word or heard? Yes. <laughs> oh, you don't get to talk. You tried to betray Clover and escape on your own. Perhaps. But I think that's better than nearly killing someone. Well, well I only did it so that she wouldn't kill Tenmyoji. <laughs> Ah! God damn it! Enough already! I roared with fury, and my voice echoed and rebounded off the walls of the warehouse. Everyone fell silent. I didn't know how long that silence would last, so I decided to put it all on the table. There was only one way I was going to be able to take control of the situation. Guys, listen to me. We really don't have time for this. I was met with a number of glares, but I soldiered on. Soldered on? So- Is that how you spell soldier? I guess it is. See, the thing is, I figured out who planted the bombs. What? Is this what you were talking about earlier? Soldier. Okay, so I guess it was correct. It's just a weirdly spelt word. Gosh darn it, English. <laughs> sort of, yeah. I know which one of you it is. Well, spit it out, then. Please, explain what's going on here. I don't think I need to. They're going to admit their guilt in just a few minutes. What? You're all going to hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Or, I guess I should say, Dio's mouth. <laughs> what are you on? think I set those bombs? Yes, I do. Hey, if you're gonna accuse me, you better have some pretty damn good evidence, pal. I'm no- I'm not accusing you. I'm just stating a fact. Oh yeah? Where the hell'd you get that fact? Fun as it was, I knew taunting alone wouldn't be enough to make Dio confess. He'd just play dumb. He was good at it. And I'd get nothing. That meant I was going to have to trick him. From your mom! <laughs> and he's like, I don't have one! And it's like, how would you know that? He's like, what do you mean? Clones don't have mothers left. And he's like, shit, how'd he know? 
Well, you see, I'm actually from Free the Soul. Free the Soul? What's that? Some kind of hippie shoe company? <laughs> Don't play dumb, Dio. Or should I call you... Left? Brother ordered me to come here. To keep an eye on you. <laughs> it was quick, but for just a moment I saw his eyes twitch. I leapt on that moment of weakness like a hungry dog on a steak. Like a hungry Chie on a steak. <laughs> Fine. Skepticism is understandable. Admirable, even. But perhaps this will convince you. I pressed forward, pulling out every fact I could remember. I told Dio about Brother's background, and how his younger brother, Left, had been murdered. I mentioned casually that the Myrmidons were all clones of a single person. So? Still not convinced? How about this? 7815361098838094241990551. Do a little prime factor decomposition on that, and you'll get 198,449,351 to the third power. If I'm not who I say I am, how on earth could I possibly know that? What? No, that's not possible. Finally. So, let's start over, shall we? I was sent here to watch your every move. It seems our wise and noble brother doesn't trust you. He suspects betrayal. No! You're lying! I assure you I'm not. Completely. <laughs> but if you don't believe me, why don't you go outside and call him yourself with your transmitter? No. No! You have to be lying! Brother trusts me! That's why he chose me for this mission! Why would he make me the leader of the Myrmidons if he- <clears throat> Huh? Sorry, what was that? I said, why would he have made me the leader of the Myrmidons if- Huh. I grinned. Wait. The hell? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Sorry, Dio. I imagine the Anya grin. Just... <laughs> I'm actually... Wait, hold on! I'm wearing my Anya shirt right now! With a, the Mission 6, the exact smile. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> uh, it's a little faded, but I, I am wearing a t-shirt with that exact grin. <laughs> I've never even seen Brother. What the hell was all that? How did you know all those things? Dunno. Maybe I was divinely inspired? Yeah, the Anya grin. Uh... Give me a second. If that'll pull it up correctly... Nope, it didn't work. Ignore that, then. Ignore that message. I don't know why it didn't work, and also why can't I delete it? Probably because I'm the one who's doing it. Why does it do that sometimes? The slash thing just screws it up. Because it just says 404 not found, and there's like a weird slash. What? Why does that- Huh? Because if I click on it, it just is weird. Okay, well, that's the face. No one on mobile can click on Darn it! <laughs> it's the face she makes. What can I say? <laughs> uh, what's going on? What are these... The smugness is great. <laughs> I break things all the time. It's the eyes that make it... <laughs> <laughs> she's just so... She's just so smug. <laughs> Dio and I stared at one another while Clover and Tenmyoji quickly explained to Fai and Kei about the memory card and the number two bomb, and about the code we'd found that was from a terrorist organization called the Myrmidons. 
<laughs> yes. So anyway. You to say someone from the Myrmidons planted the bombs. And Dio pretty much just admitted to doing it? Yeah. Bastards. I'll never forgive you. I heard a low, furious muttering behind me and turned to see Alice. Her lips pulled back into a snarl. I am going to kill you! Her voice rose to a scream as she charged toward Dio. He ducked out of the way smoothly and pulled something from his pocket. Whoa there. Did Sigma pull this out from some timeline shenanigan? Yes. <laughs> it's a zero escape game. What did you expect? <laughs> I like my women a little feisty. But you're taking it a little too far, sweetheart. Tone it down. What? You see this? You know what it is, don't you? Oh. Oh my god. Is that... Is that the detonator? Exactly. And I assume you know what happens if I press this button? Yes. I think I do. I'm guessing it'll set off both of the bombs. Mm, well, I wouldn't say... both. You mean there's still a number one bomb we haven't found? Correct. And there's one more, too. No. There are four bombs? Exactly. I've planted four bombs. They're the ones numbered one, two, and three, but there's also one more. Bomb number zero. Add all that up and you're looking at about four tons of explosive power. Those go off and it's all over. That's enough oomph to turn this whole place into a smoking crater. Thanks for the info. I'll use this to cheat in the other timelines, Sigma. <laughs> Aren't you forgetting something? That'd kill you, too. So? I'm ready for that. I've got spares. Spares? Is that what Sigma was talking about? Yeah. Clones. I heard Alice whisper something to Clover. Let's go, Clover. Show him all that dream wasn't for nothing. Huh? Oh, yeah. Right. Before I had a chance to ask them what was going on, they moved. I love that scream! Oh, Alice's voice actor is killing it right now. Just like how the character she's voicing is killing Dio. She roared and leapt toward Dio, Clover following just behind. Alice threw a punch at Dio's face, and as he dodged, Clover spun out from behind her. Dio grunted and turned to focus on Alice, but Clover darted in and snatched the detonator from his hand. Huh? Before I could respond, Clover had thrown the detonator at me. I scrambled to grab it out of the air and held it to my chest. Don't throw that! <laughs> Please! Stop! Let me go! Still let go of me, you asshole! Yelling didn't do him any good, and Dio found himself subdued by the skillful teamwork of Alice and Clover. Strangely, though, they once they had a hold of him. He stopped struggling. I was reminded of a gazelle with its neck in the mouth of a lion. Had he surrendered? Or did he have some trick up his sleeve? It didn't feel right. I didn't have to wait long for my misgivings to prove true. The detonator in my hand suddenly began to flash. <laughs> what? Ha! Serves you right! <laughs> Alice ate him. <laughs> Delicious. What if I break it in half? I don't think that'll work. What are you laughing at? You. Her. All of you. God, you're stupid. What? Why? See that detonator you threw to Sigma? You activated it. If it gets more than a meter away from me, it sets itself off. We figured someone might try to take it away, so we put in a little safeguard. Since you two were kind of to take it away from me. The bombs have gone from remote control to countdown timer. Go ahead and destroy the detonator if you want. It won't make any difference now. The bombs are gonna go off no matter what. How long do we have? <laughs> About 30 minutes. 
30 minutes. Oh no. My condolences. Well, what can we do to stop them? I told you that already. First, we need the device that allows us to input information. Then we plug it into each bomb and enter the codes. A meter is not that far away, though. That's like, it's a pretty smart setup. I don't know how it works, but a meter is still within arm's reach. Dio could easily take it back. So it's like there's no solution. He either presses it and sets them off, or it gets far enough away from him that they go off automatically on a timer. It was break time like 20 minutes ago. Oh my god, it was. Hey, Alice. Who the hell are you? How do you know all this? None of your damn business. Just tell me where the input device is. <laughs> well, that's none of your damn business. <laughs> Fuck! Stop! You're gonna break it! Of course. That's the plan. Please, stop! Just tell me what I want to know. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll tell you. It's in my coat. In the right-hand pocket. Clover! Check it out! Right! She nodded and started digging through his pockets. After a few minutes... It's no use! There's nothing here! Did you lie to me? No! I, I swear, keep looking! Oh, wait! There is something in here! <laughs> You're gonna break it. Correct Mundio! <laughs> oh my god, can you imagine if Alice said that to him? <laughs> Fi would have said that. Clover pulled her hand from his pocket and held it out. Is that a pill? Like, for medicine? Hey, what is this? Huh? I can't see it. Bring it over here. Clover frowned and moved closer to Dio, holding the pill out towards him. Suddenly, he moved, his right hand snaking out to grab the pill from Clover's hand. Before anyone could react, he shoved it into his mouth. I heard a tiny crack as he bit down on it. Almost immediately, he grimaced in pain. Shit! What? What was that? Poison, I guess. What? Damn! How could I be so stupid? His eyes rolled up into his head, and flecks of spittle began to trickle out from the corners of his mouth. I grabbed him by the hair and shook. What the hell are you doing? Where's the input device? <laughs> I lost it. In my couch. You said Herc? What does that Back mean? <laughs> Don't screw with me! <laughs> Fine. Don't tell us. How about you give us the deactivation codes instead? Deactivation? <laughs> you guys are persistent. Fine. Not gonna do you much good anyway. But I'll tell you. You only get one. And this is the deactivation code for bomb three. Eh. Eh. Ready? L X Q L H C N M R. Beautiful. This is so hard to draw with controller. Yeah, mouse is not much better. I'll say that. Imagine he said loser. Gosh. Oh! It's not LMR, it's NMR. What about the other three? Tell us the other three! The last part is Lamore. <laughs> he didn't even seem to hear me. My body will be a part of the foundation of a bright future. Was with my typo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his voice was weak, and more foam was dribbling out of his mouth. Such a beautiful 
world. May brother live in everlasting glory. Those were the last words Dio spoke. He died with a strange, happy smile. <sighs> Damn. He only gave us the password for one of the bombs. This is bad. We have two. I mean, you don't think we have two, but we have two. What are we gonna do? I don't know. How much time have we got? 25 minutes. Are you sure? Yes. When he told us the time, I checked my bracelet. It said exactly 30 minutes. You mean the bombs are gonna go off the same time the next set of doors opens? Box the bomb. Automat is clogging my chat. Help. If I'm not seeing the messages that you're typing, then I intentionally told them to block those phrases. When it holds a message and then later appears, it's me looking over and seeing, like, it's not sure. And then I permit or deny it accordingly. Oh, it's saying that mods have allowed your mess. Oh, it's doing that glitch where it keeps repeating that. Oh, I, there's, that's a Twitch thing. I cannot help you with that. Yeah, that's that's a Twitch glitch. Twitch is twitching. Yes. The time on your bracelet is the time we have left. Yeah, I would just hit the refresh the whole page thing. Oh. So, 25 minutes. This isn't good. I was hoping that we might be able to escape through the white doors, but... It takes five minutes for the primary door to open and close, so... Yes, I know. There's no way we can get through them before the explosion happens. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but now it's gonna take 28 years to catch back up. No! Well, there's no point just standing around. We should start looking. We need three things. The password input device. And the remaining two bombs, right? Right. We also need passwords for all the bombs other than number three. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe Dio has a note or something? Hold on. Let me check. She knelt down and quickly checked his pockets and sleeves, then sat back on her heels, frustrated. Damn. He's clean. I already know the passwords. Because I cheated, she looked pale. It's not cheating. Then we'll just have to hope we find it somewhere. Tenmyoji, can you go tell Luna what's happened? Right. I'm on it. Good. The rest of you, let's move out. We can do this. Let's go. We all took off at a run, heading to different parts of the building. But... All of our searching turned up nothing. And as we searched, the clock kept ticking. <laughs> Dio didn't consider the possibility that he was snitching on himself in another timeline. <gasps> He's not thinking across the fifth dimension. Then at last, the chromatic doors opened. Chromatic doors have opened. Five minutes remain until chromatic doors close. Oops, sorry. Our time had run out. We watched the white doors open. Were they doors to heaven? Or to hell? The thought had barely had the thought barely had time to flutter through my mind before everything went white. We didn't even have time to say goodbye. A thousand emotions flooded my brain in those last moments. Why? How? How had we ended up this way? Then a blistering wave of heat, like the surface of the sun itself, wiped out any lingering thoughts.
My consciousness slipped away into a bottomless pool of darkness. Neither heaven nor hell, only the void. And the sigma had been reduced to atoms. No! <sighs> Where's my screenshot of all the routes? Here it is. Ah, uh, yes, we still have a few more rooms to do normally. Alice End. Okay, this is a game. It sure is. <laughs> and now it is time to betray Alice in the round one of the AB game. Hey, it's almost time. Vroom! So, Alice, what's having Radical Six like? Well, it's like playing Persona 4 Golden and fast forwarding the dialogue. Oh no. And also, Laura Bailey scans you and tells you you're in bad shape. Again, like in Persona 4 Golden when battles go badly, but the audio is so fast it might as well not even be her. No! Ah! You're right. I should take a break here. So I'll do that. I need to. Unfortunately, clicking on the screen made her text advance. Thank you, game guy. Uh, how many Ks are there? In? Or did I say something? I'm not sure anymore. I guess I should say thanks. So, uh, thanks. Aw, oh, come on. <laughs> you don't need to do that. I just made the obvious choice. Obvious? Well, I'm sure Alice chose Betray. That means we pretty much had to choose Betray, right? How do you know what she's going to choose? I guess you could say I just know. Are you making fun of me? Maybe. <laughs> Yo! What's up? Sigree! I know! Hey, what are you kids doing over there? We're about to announce the results. And that's the last time you'll ever hear that. Let's go. We'll find out if you made the right choice. All right. The last ever. The last ever. Oh. oh, there's only one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Looks like you're all here. Finally, let's get ready to rock. rock! Up at X Game! <laughs> Round one! The results! If everybody would please direct their eyes to this monitor. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hey, now, hold the phone here. What's going on? Now, wait just a d gosh darn second. Here are the results from your game. She chose Betray last time. Now, let us check the numbers on our bracelets. Hey, Alice! What the hell is this? What? You chose Betray last time! So I... I chose Betray too. No, why? Wait a minute. Last time? What on earth are you talking about? Um, uh, can you tell me one thing? What? When exactly did you press the button? Five minutes before the deadline. Shh. There's that announcement, right? I pressed it right after that. Why? What? No, that can't... What was going on? When Fi and I chose Ally, Alice picked Betray. 
you've just made the most rational choice. The best way to minimize risk and maximize reward in this situation is to choose betrayal. Anyone who thinks otherwise is, well, an idiot. But this time, I chose betray and her vote changed to ally. Why? What was different? Had history somehow changed because of my choice? No, that was insane. If Alice had somehow known that I had chosen Betray and chosen Ally in response, at least that would have followed the principle of cause and effect. But what had just happened was something entirely different. There was no way Alice could have known what we would choose when she made her decision. Besides, if she had known we intended to betray her, there's no way she would have chosen Ally. In other words, she must have made her decision without any knowledge of ours. Let's say we're talking about a game of rock, paper, scissors. I throw out a rock. Right after that, Alice throws down paper. Obviously, I lose. So I go back in time and decide to whip out the scissors this time. This time, Alice chooses rock. I lose again. But that's fine, because it still makes sense. My actions in the past caused Alice's actions in the future. Easy. But what had just happened in the AB game wasn't like that. Let's go back to that innocent game of rock, paper, scissors. When he wants to shoot and she wants to shake hands, yeah. This time, Alice is the one who threw out her hand first. But in this situation, there's no way for me to know what it is. Uh, three. So I decide to go with rock. Now Alice's choice is revealed. Turns out she went with paper. Damn it. I lose and I'm pissed off. So once again, I go back in time and try and change history and erase my loss. What will I choose this time? That's not even a question. Scissors, obviously. After all, last time Alice went with paper. Here's the important part. When I make this choice, Alice has already made her choice. Sure of my victory, I throw out a pair of scissors. But... What the hell? My rage would be white hot. How could this have happened? Why? Alice's hand had been paper before. How did it change to rock? Obviously, there's no cause and effect here. Since Alice's choice was in the past and mine was in the future. How could that even happen? How could the future influence the past? But... Ah, ah, ah. Be careful. Don't bite me. This toy is not for my hands to be in your mouth. It's for me to hold the other end of the toy that you're not letting me grab. <laughs> it wasn't theoretical now. This had actually happened. What the hell was going on? No, wait. Wait! Wait, 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 wait. Why the fuck was I talking so casually about going back in time? That kind of stuff doesn't happen in real life. Right. Of course. Time travel is impossible. There is absolutely, positively, no way to travel through time. But, if that was true... The best way to minimize risk and maximize reward in this situation is to choose betray. Anyone who thinks otherwise is, well, an idiot. Hey, did you have a stroke or something? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, oh, <laughs> sorry. Besides, why do I have to answer your questions? I should be the one yelling at you. Because of you two, I've only got one VP left. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right? What in God's name is wrong with you? A lot of things. I'm kind of struggling right now, Alice. <laughs> I'm sorry. Really, I, I seriously feel terrible about this. Forget it. I'm never going to trust you or Fi again. Fuck. <laughs> You'll pay for this. Oops. Alice stormed off. She threw one last hurt, scornful look over her shoulder as she left, and it stabbed me right through the heart. Alice, I've died twice, and you were the cause of one of them! <laughs> Actually, he's died three times. She said, with malice! Uh -huh. One of the other teams seemed to be dealing with a similar issue. I really don't know what I can say. 
We had no idea you would choose Ally. No way I'd choose Betray. Not with Clover on the other side. What? What do you mean? Do you have an interest in Clover? What? No. Uh, that's not... No. What is it then? Well... Um... You'd have to be crazy to pick Ally. Damn, Kay. That was savage. The only way it'd make any sense to do that is if you really, really trusted the other person. <laughs> So you're saying you don't trust me then? Okay, do you have an interest in Clover? What? No, what the fu- why would you say that? Duh! Genuinely, what the fuck? Are you senile? Why the hell would I trust some old geezer I just met a few hours ago? Ah, uh, I see. Say no more. Didn't think it'd hurt this much. Clover! Huh? What's that supposed to mean? You're starting to get kind of creepy. Creepy, huh? I understand. I guess I just haven't had enough time to earn your trust. Um, I suppose you could say that. I just didn't really expect you to be so nice about it. Well, looks like those guys managed to get through this all right. Figure that means the fault here's got to be mine. Huh? Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't worry about it. We only did what anybody else would do. Right, Mr. Dio? Yeah, exactly. Dio, Quark, and Luna, on the other hand, seem to have resolved things amicably by all choosing ally. No doubt we were all wishing we'd done the same. But why had Dio sounded so awkward? What had happened in the AB room? Only Dio and Quark knew for sure. Zero, when does the next round start? Roo! Information! Woo! Alright, let's go. A bunch of information we've already had before. <laughs> I appreciate the option to skip dialogue you've seen in another timeline. It's so nice. Can you imagine having to- What are you doing here? Having to spam text advance to get through all this? Still mad, huh? Obviously. Oh, come on now, you don't have to get your panties in a bunch. That's easy for you to say, Dio. You're sitting pretty at 5 BP. Tenmyoji and I only have one. You do understand what that means, don't you? Uh, no, you don't. You can do any of them in any order. You speed ran Parasite Eve. Yes, I do imagine. Oh, no. That's no reason to take your anger out on people. You won't get your BP back by being a jerk to him. What's this? You're gonna take his side? I thought you of all people would agree with me. I do. No, you don't. You don't get it. Why would you care? You've got, what, maybe five years left? Maybe less? I'm not like you. I'm still young. I want to live a long life. There's so many things I still want to do. Most of the two hours is mashing X button. No! Damn, Alice. <laughs> all right, crew quarters. That's all that's left. I appreciate this. There's a bomb. We saw the bomb go off. Oh shit. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Woo! She talks about how big the explosion's gonna be. Lots of lots and lots and lots and lots of talking. Four minutes till the doors open. Chromatic doors have opened. Five minutes remain until chromatic doors close. Hey, the doors are open. We need to figure out who's gonna go through which door. <laughs> uh, well, what are our options this time? Pay attention. I'm only saying this once. Just like the last time, we've got three possible combinations. 
Fi quickly laid out our choices. Option A. Luna and I pair up with Clover and go through the green door. Tenmyoji and Dio pair up with Alice to go through the red door. K and Quark pair up with Fi and go through the blue door. Anytime a semblance of a text box appears, ugh. Option B. Luna and I pair up with Fi and go through the red door. Tenmyoji and Dio pair up with Clover and go through the blue door. K and Quark pair up with Alice and go through the green door. Option C. Luna and I pair up with Alice and go through the blue door. Tenmyoji and Dio pair up with Fi and go through the green door. K and Quark pay up with, pair up with Clover and open the red door. Three minutes remain until chromatic doors close. Okay. How do we want to do this? Well, you decided the first time, right? Y yeah. Then can I decide this time? Why you? I think I deserve it. I only have one BP left. Doesn't it seem like the fair thing is to let the person who's at the greatest disadvantage choose? Wouldn't you agree? That means you should get to choose too. I mean, you've only got one BP, right? You've got a point. But how about we listen to what Alice wants first? So tell us, which door and which people do you want? The green door. And I want to go with Kay and Quark. I see. Option B, then. That means Tenmyoji and Dio will go with Clover through the blue door. Is that all right with you, Tenmyoji? Yeah, sure. I don't mind. But why? If we go through there together, that means you'll be playing against me in the next AB game. Are you really, really sure? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Matter of fact, that's why I want to go with you. You said you didn't trust me, right? Well, I'd like to change your mind. I figure this will give me the chance. Um... I've been wanting to pair up with Alice, too. There's something I want to talk to you about. He wants to hear about Ice Nine. He does. Oh. And that is? We'll get to that later. Anyway, Alice's first choice would be option B, then? Uh, it's green or red for us. Yes, I guess. <laughs> clover, Clover, Clover. As long as you don't spill military secrets, we'll be fine. No, Alice is gonna hire us, remember? What about the rest of you? Is that okay, too? Oops, that was me, wasn't it? I thought about it for a moment. If I went with option B, then Luna and I would go through the red door with Fi. As far as how I felt about that... Wait, was it red door? The red door with Fi. Let's do that last! No. No. That's not okay. Why not? Because... Oh, oh no. This is bad. Which door do you want, then? The only other choices are A and C. Thought about it again. If I went with A, then Luna and I would end up paired with Clover, and we'd go through the green door. On the other hand, if I chose C, we'd be going through the blue door with Alice. So which one did I want? I decided to go with... Green! It won't let us go through the blue door. I want option A. We'll take Clover and go through the green door. What gives you the power to just decide that? That's fine by me. Like I said before, there's something I want to talk to Alice about. Are you going to tell me what this thing is? That'll have to wait. Talk to me again on the other side. Oh, now I'm curious. So you're fine with this, Alice? With option A, I mean? Do whatever you want. I don't care. Are there any other objections? Okay, that's it then. Let's go, everybody. Sorry, Fi. We'll hang out with you again later. Until chromatic doors close. Nine, eight, seven. We nodded quickly to one another and split up. Tenmyoji, Dio, and Alice headed toward the red door, while Kay, Quark, and Fi made their way toward the blue door. Hopefully we don't blow up this time. <laughs> The gaping maw of the green door bounced in front of me as Clover, Luna, and I ran toward it. Yes. Two. One. Zero. Chromatic doors closing. Alright, that, that, that's that choice made. You were. Days threw out five tier ones. Huh? And I believe you were one of the recipients. 
Is this a dead end? All three doors seem to be locked. <laughs> yeah. There's some kind of device over here. I wonder what it is. It looks like the thing next to the number nine door. It's all right. I mean, they days might still be in here, but if not, you can just, if you see them in chat, you could thank them then. Clover, try pulling that lever. Why do I have to do it? It might be dangerous. I was hoping you could just wrap your hands around it and give it a good jerk. It is kind of big, but I'm sure you can handle it. Just be gentle. Sigma, what the fuck? Uh, this doesn't seem like appropriate workplace behavior. So, uh, I can't believe I read that without breaking until I got to the end. You're kind of grossing me out. I know you probably still think of yourself as just a girl, but you have to become a woman some- You're not making it any better! Why don't you do it? If you can't take it, then maybe Luna can. I think this was the pervert line that spiked it. Yeah, 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 that's like a- that's a really weird fucking line, and it doesn't get any better! Have you done this before? You just start at the base and work your way up. And give a good tug once you get to the top. What? What is wrong with you? If you're so desperate to give that lever a good time, why don't you do it yourself? Maybe I will. Just leave me and Luna out of your sick fantasies, you creep. I just want to see you pull a lever, okay? <laughs> Fine. But I won't like it. I sighed heavily and flipped the switch with as much languid disdain as I could manage. He's... Uh, he's a horny college student. <laughs> but that's not really an excuse. That's just, I guess, the why. One of the doors opened. Nice. Yeah, just the one on the left. Hmm, we might as well go through it. Yeah. Maybe we should try flipping it one more time, though. I think you could actually manage it with just one hand, Clover. Just do it real fast. It'll only take a second. Just up and down, once. Ugh, you are disgusting. I don't know why he said that. Maybe he's just trying to crack a joke to lighten the mood, but it's not working. It's not working. It's really not working. Anyway, we're in a library now. Oh god, what is this room called? It's not Q. So this is the archives. archives. A bookshelf room. Yes, that works. So far, that was the most de degenerate behavior I've seen. Even worse than the poster. I I do think that's the worst thing he says in the entire game. But it's it's fine. It's just there. We've moved past it. He gets better. He's a good guy at heart. He's just. That's what it said on the door after all, but... Yeah, I didn't really expect it to be so... archivey. All these books and stuff everywhere. Maybe we can find some clues here. I agree. Alright, let's split up and have a look around. Alonzi! There's a little guy up there. Do you see him? <laughs> Do you see the little guy? Isn't there something up there? I can't see from down here. Are you sure? It's too high up for us to be able to tell what it is. Are you sure about that? The stairway. Go up A0502. Some of the books here are written in Latin. You don't need to apologize for that! S 
some books written in Latin. Is every book in here written in Latin? I think that's the puzzle. <laughs> Maybe it's not. I'm surprised they can talk to him normally after the lever incident. Oh, yeah, oops. I forgot about that. I fixed it, though. Blue Book gonna give us some car prices, yes. And lion. To the sun. To the sun. All these books are making me dizzy. <laughs> if you two young ladies will help me replicate, I think I'll be fine. Um, are you sure you don't mean recuperate? He's very dizzy. A dice? Or a die, sorry. <laughs> what the fuck, Sigma? If you put it in a snowball, you could get a little extra oomph. That's not what I meant! <laughs> Maybe it's useful if you're reading some deconstructionist literature. What? If you find something like that, except I don't have anything like that. So I don't know why you're telling me. <laughs> Movie you saw? You're trying to kill who you're playing with? Attach the weight to the screen. Notebook paper. A music box. Aha, uh -huh. really now? You don't say. Don't ask why I did that. Don't ask why I did it. <laughs> I just had a feeling. Uh, archive? <laughs> right, I remember that. Six, five, four, two, one, three. Why did I do that? I don't know. Felt like it. Le and Vans Terribles, a French movie from 1950 based on a tw 1929 model. Oh. Wait, is the is you gonna say the table's empty? Yes, we've taken everything off the desk. All that's left is the desk itself. I don't see anything underneath it either. Oh my god, Clover, don't move! Huh? Is there something wrong? That girls only did this pose in magazines. To see it in real life. And from behind, no less. What's going on? I'm coming back out. Okay. Damn, that was good. What are you talking about? 
Oh, nothing. Just thinking out loud. Down bad on me. Damn it, Sigma. <laughs> Just need the right five-digit number, except... What is it, five plus five times five? I get the feeling that's not it. It's the weight, I bet, of the dice. Management number. Oh god, I remember this. Just... <sighs> the four shelves match up to the chart. Then the bookshelves from the left would be A, B, A, B, C, and D. That would make the thin one on the left A, and then B, C, and D as you go to the right. I think numbers are the rows counting from the top. So the top shelf would be column A, row 1. <laughs> I stream long. Six hours isn't that bad. I like Sigma when he isn't being his college student self. When he's not being a college kid. <laughs> I think it'd be easier if you just call it A1. Yeah, so that's the logic behind it. So... Which one said A? That's D. That's C. That's A. That's B. Okay. Wait. This is where we found it, though, right? Maybe the last number is the position of the book on the shelf. So, like, if it was two, then it'd be the second book from the left. Uh huh. So, the pair with go up is the stairway, and the pair with the stairway is go up. So, maybe it is just switch the places of the books. Let's see. This is the third row of bookshelf C, that would make it C3. Oh. Yep. What was that? I think it came from the other side of the wall. No, that wasn't the wall. I think it came from the bookshelf. What's happening? The bookshelf have become... Stairs. Amazing. It sunk? I guess it was one of those trick bookshelves where if you put the right thing in the right place, it does stuff. Alright, let's go up those stairs then. Oh, oh, let me read this. Should I go? Well, with a big skirt like that, it might get kind of dangerous. Oh, if I just hike it up, I think I should be... And, uh, I think there's somebody down on all fours trying not to look like he's staring up toward the bookshelf. Sigma? What are you doing? I, uh, lost a contact. You don't wear any. Ow! You climb. Okay... Uh, a doll? Okay, that's the only thing that's up here. Guess I might as well take it. Huh. Can't really go any further. This is a dead end. Are you done yet? 
Was there anything up there? Yeah, I'm heading back down now. Deserved. No puzzles, just a lion. <laughs> that's a funny looking dog. Dog? I'm pretty sure that's a lion. This is a lion? It doesn't really look like one. Nah, it's a lion. Oh, hold on. There's a zipper on its back. <laughs> Let's see what's inside. No! A memory card. Ah, fuck. Uh, let's not do that yet. I hate that puzzle. Holy shit. Let's do the scale thing. So we know the dice is 50. Which means we can experiment. This is heavier than a hundred. The green dice is a hundred. So the blue dice. Wow, really? <laughs> I... <laughs> Red is 50 grams. 50 G. Green is 100 and blue is 150. Oh. Which means math. The blue dice is 150. The green dice is 100. The red dice is 50. You do math. I have the answer written down. <laughs> Wait. There it is. There we go. Unlocked. Good job! Let's open it. Latin. Oh, and a bookmark. Oh. Oh. <sighs> so that's one of the solutions. The other solution is the, uh... Wrong one. Is the... Report. Which is six, five, four, two, one, three. Which doesn't matter what the colors are, so long as I can get them to do that. We're gonna do the harder one first. Oh my god, this control is like pain. <laughs> and by pain, I mean it's like not cooperating. Stop doing that! Stop! There we go. We got that one to be one. This one needs to be two. 
Nat needs to be three. Oh my god! Please! Wait. Don't tell me. Ah, uh, it has to be both, doesn't it? God fucking damn it. Okay, the, uh, the four needs to be the green. Please roll downwards, thank you. reset now. I mean, right? Five, six, four, two, one, three. Oh, do they have to be oriented a specific way, too? Gosh, I hope not. Because that would mean two and three's orientations are important. Wait, is my pen not closed fully? This is not, this is like, this feels dried out. So is it the color combined with the number? Because I thought orientation had mattered then. Ooh. I mean, this is a digital puzzle, so he wouldn't be able to do that, even. Why specifically your heart? Is it blue again? Nope. 
Okay, so it is color and number. Gosh. <sighs> Alright, we got them both, though, and that's what's important. Where the fuck is the safe? Oh, it's right here. Gosh. The f oh, the dice puzzle that's in the in-room queue fucking sucks. Oh god, I can't wait. First one is just color, yeah. That's what I got on accident, which is what I was not going for. <laughs> that's why I was like, no! Star, star, sun. Open it again. Uh, star, sun, moon. Whew. So what do we got this time? First, a map. It says floor B. When we found it in the cabin, it said floor A. So did the map in the infirmary. That means floor A must be the top floor, right? It did come down here on the elevator, after all. So it would seem. There's more stuff in here. Moon key! What's next? A piece of paper. There are some more AB game rules for you. Not voting is not an option. We've seen this one. And the exit key. Nice. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Nice. I don't know that we'll be getting to another room after this. So I'll just put the journal away. Is this another warehouse? It looks like it. Just like the one on floor A. There's graffiti on the wall here too. It's something different though. Memento Mori if the ninth lion ate the sun. Did, did they make a mistake? Uh, that isn't how you spell it. They added that E to ninth, but why? Yeah, that is weird. What does it mean? Well, I think Memento Mori is Latin for something like remember death or don't forget your mortality. That other part, I mean, I assume it's just what it says on the tin. A conditional relating to whether or not a lion has eaten the sun? Uh, yeah. But what on earth does that mean? It just seems like gibberish. Agreed. Whatever it means is beyond me. Look at that door over there. Doesn't it look just like the one on the other floor? Yeah, but there isn't anything written on this one. <laughs> what if it's a typo? <laughs> well, it's like, uh, the first one. The first one on floor A says, Two Milkmen Go Comedy. It's actually an anagram, and if you shuffle all the letters around, it says, Welcome to my kingdom. Nine lions standing on top of each other can reach the sun. I, yeah, that's what that means. <laughs> and they'd never do that, because they don't cooperate enough for it to happen. Guess that means this door isn't important. I don't see anything that looks like it might open it either. Yep. Okay, but Milkman is pretty comedy. <laughs> yep, nothing. Not opening. Of course it isn't. I mean, look at this thing. It's solid steel. Kind of looks like more that it's iron, but regardless of the metal, it's incredibly rusty. Well, how do you open it then? From the other side, maybe? The other side? 
Hey, what's the deal with those doors? Sigma punch it. The ones that are glowing white. Do you think they could be chromatic doors? There are three of them. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. See, they've got those little boxes. These must be the next set of chromatic doors we're supposed to go through. But they're all the same color. Well, for all the other doors, we had to add colors together to make another color. In this case, we probably just have to make white instead. Suddenly, the voice of the announcer echoed through the warehouse. Punch the and locks the on the doors! Has been opened. I don't think that... I don't think... 45 minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. What? How the hell did that happen? Someone on one of the other teams must have opened one. All they'd need is one of the moon keys. Well, why would they do that without waiting for the rest of us? We can ask them when we get there. Come on. I bet it was Dio. What? No. Never. Couldn't possibly be. Dio would never betray us like that. <laughs> then who was it, Z? I don't know. I. I it could be anyone. Dio is a very honorable man. We leapt out of the magenta door and into the warehouse. There stood Tenmyoji, Dio, and Alice. Anyone including Dio. Hey, what the hell is this? Why'd you open one of the AB rooms before the rest of us got back? Alice and I haven't done anything. Dio apparently felt he didn't need to wait. Damn it, Jumpy, you were right. I can't believe I trusted Dio. <laughs> How could I? You got a problem? Yes, yes, I do have a problem. Why? I don't remember saying anything about waiting until everyone got back to open the AB rooms. Are you kidding me? We didn't talk about it because we thought it was common sense. Sigma's right. I'm sorry, Jumpy. We were able to get back quickly, but... But Dio seems so trustworthy. The others could still be stuck somewhere. <laughs> no sooner were the words out of her mouth. Oh, thank goodness. Is this because of that gram to pounds conversion? No, no, not at all. You're all here. Did something happen? Yes, it's Quark, you see. He... What? What happened to Quark? He collapsed. It happened so suddenly. We were just searching our room. What? I mean, he claims to be yeah. Please, you must hurry. And implies number. prime factor decomposition on a twenty-five digit number is simple. <laughs> Alice is great though. Alice is cool. Look at the title of my stream. This condition could change at any moment. <laughs> you should go. Oh no. Tenmyoji shoved Kay aside and leapt through the yellow door. The rest of us exchanged a few startled looks, then ran off after him. I did betray, though. I, I had to. Quark. Come on, kid. Get a hold of yourself. Tenmyoji grabbed Quark's shoulders and began to shake him desperately. I think this is all the same. He has Radical Six. In the archives? No, that was just piles and piles of books and papers. She is no, that's super cool. She trusts us enough to sell to to tell us that. Nothing even remotely like medicine there. Uh, what about you, Kay? I'm terribly sorry. There was nothing of the sort in the garden. 
Plenty of vegetation, but unfortunately, no medicine. There was a lion too, oh, don't God. forget that. I won't. Look, just to be sure, where did the three of you go? The pantry. There was tons of food everywhere, but Excelivir, nothing. Tenmyoji slumped to the ground. For a moment, there was silence. Quark? Weeong! Take the scalpel away! Don't let him take it! Run! Knock him out! Oh no! Alice! <laughs> Which way could she have gone? No one here, huh? Damn, where did she go? No point in complaining. I just needed to look somewhere else. I turned and headed toward the exit. Let me skip- No! She went to find the bomb. I don't think that's what she's doing. So this is the pantry, huh? Alice, Tenmyoji, and Dio searched this room. Damn. Nothing here, either. We need to find her quick, or she's gonna do something bad. If she loses it like Quark did, and nobody's around to stop her... Shit, I need to hurry. I decided to try the garden where Phi, Quark, and Kay had gone after passing through their door. To the bee garden! Which is on the other side of the universe. Pantry is nowhere near the bee garden. The first thing I noticed when I stepped inside was the smell. Plant life was everywhere, and the air was filled with the fresh scent of it growing, underlaid with the seat dry sweet dry tones of dead leaves underfoot. While the air outside had been dry and harsh, in here it was warm and wet, like a forest after a spring rain. Just like Kay said, plants and stuff everywhere. It stands for Balam Garden. No, oh, no. Hello, Wasabi! <laughs> She's not here either. This is bad. We'd been searching for Alice for a while, and I'd found nothing. I hoped that nothing had happened to her, but... <laughs> I, I know, but I was like, ah, dang. <laughs> How do we get it mobilized? <laughs> We've been searching for Alice for a while, but I'd found nothing. I hoped nothing had happened to her, but... We were wrong! She isn't here! No! I searched every corner of Floor B. She was nowhere to be seen. This is pointless. I should just get back to Floor A. Maybe someone else has found her. No, Crimp, don't say it like that! <laughs> no! The crew quarters.
Doesn't look like anybody's here. I should have a look in the rooms. Alice! The first thing I saw when I stepped through the door was the blossom of red on her chest. It was almost like getting punched. I stopped short, my body refusing to move. No! Why did this happen? I forced one shaking foot forward, then the next. My legs began to wobble, and I put a hand against the wall to steady myself as my heart thundered in my chest. Calm down. Calm down. This looks pretty bad, but you don't actually know anything yet. Yeah, th that's right. Maybe it's not too late. Maybe we can still save her. Then at last, I pressed my fingers to her neck, and those hopes were dashed. No pulse. Clearly, she wasn't breathing either. Her pupils had dilated hideously, making her face seem somehow inhuman. No! Embedded in her chest was a scalpel. I was no doctor, but judging by the angle, it looked like it had pierced her heart. Had someone stabbed her? No. What if she... We're all going to die. I'd rather die here! No. No. Something in my brain snapped. Ah! My scream! No! <laughs> the scream clawed its way out of my body, taking my mind with it. The last thing I felt was my body slumping to the floor as the world went dark. I came to, I was floating in a field of nothingness. Wait, really? Wait, hold the phone. What? It kicked me out. <laughs> well, since it did, do you want to go the other route? <laughs> May as well, right? <laughs> That's how I've been doing it. I haven't been going back to timelines that I have the information on, even if I have it. Like, we've had this one. We've had this one for a while. Being scalpeled would kick me out, too. <laughs> Let's save all the good stuff for Romance one stream. Door. Fuck yeah, yeah. I love that idea. As far as how I felt about that, yes. Yeah, that's fine. I don't have any problems with it. Fi is my friend. I like Fi. There were no objections. And we're all set. Let's go, everybody. Ten seconds remain until chromatic door. What was this door. ending or Alice being arrested for scalping tickets? What? Nine, eight, seven. We nodded quickly to one another and split up. Kay, Quark, and Alice headed for the green door, while Tenmyoji, Dio, and Clover ran toward the blue one. <laughs> You're a fan of Fi. Literally, I think the only room we haven't solved is... The director's... Lounge and the, uh... And Q. Those are like, there are only two rooms left. My feet slapped against the hard metal of the warehouse floor and Luna, Fi, and I ran to the chromatic door. Uh, and the next stage of the notary game. What a sentence. Two. One. Zero. Chromatic doors closing. <laughs> Fight him, thief. <laughs> That's strange. 
stretching it a little, but... <laughs> huh? Is this a dead end? All three doors seem to be locked. Yeah, looks like it. Well, she is fantastic. <laughs> I wonder what this thing is. It looks like the thing next to the number nine door. It's got a lever. Try pulling it, Sigma. Why should I? It might be dangerous. Maybe it'll trigger an explosion. Or possibly it shocks you when you pull it. Who knows? Right. Then I have no choice. Did you really think I'd say that, you heartless monster? There's nothing on either side, is there? What's that supposed to mean? Ah, oh, sorry for the confusion. I was talking about your breasts. What the fuck? It's called dressing modestly. I'll have you know I'm a C cup. If you're a C cup, I'm packing 12 inches. <laughs> we continued in that vein for some time until. Sigma, what the fuck, my dude? <laughs> Sounded like you two might take a while, so I pulled the lever. <laughs> he was being rude, and then she was like, well, excuse you. And he was like, well, excuse me. Is that okay? And then they continued, and then they started, and then they started bickering. Only the one on the left opened. The others are still shut tight. Well, we should get going anyway. Yeah. So that's such a <laughs> statement. Oh yeah, I forgot about this room. That the true ending is gonna make that moment very awkward. What do you mean? It looks like some kind of control room. I can see a huge machine of some sort on the other side of this window. They bicker like they're siblings. That's that's how I interpret it. <laughs> <laughs> Nonary games make are, is known for making me go, what the fuck, Nonary? Mm, you're gonna love Zero Time Dilemma. <laughs> Maybe a generator? Uh, what the fuck? What the fuck, Zero Escape is such a statement? But talking about <laughs> threat signs and threats. <laughs> nah, nah, that interaction. I only know that one so well because of the thing that the creator wrote in reply. Cause some, cause his Western fan base are are wonderful people, and they're all weirdos, and we're all among them, and some of them are weirder than others. But we, you know, that's just how fandoms are. Uh, they, he has like a Q and A on his social medias, and somebody had asked, genuinely, is Sigma actually packing twelve inches? And he's, <laughs> his reply is such a meme. And that's why- I, that's the only reason why I always remember that conversation. He was like, he's actually nine. But when- But when he gets aroused, it doubles in length. And then, uh, the internet had proceeded to have a field day in the, uh, fan art section. But he did genuinely actually reply with that. <laughs> he was making an he was making a uh, 999 joke as well as a digital root joke but also the implications is uh well <laughs> bro that And he has similar replies, like, uh, what's Seven's real name? <laughs> and, uh... That reply was- I don't- just, none of those- I don't think any of those answers are supposed to be taken, honestly. It's just him having fun, and the- f and I think the people who were 
asking the questions and getting those answers understood and it was just generally all around we were they were just making jokes <laughs> they were just making jokes but that <laughs> that was just like <sighs> it's funny <laughs> but it's canon no it's not canon <laughs> it's not canon at all but if it's canon, that makes it- no, no, it's just- Yeah, the creator may have said that, but I'm pretty sure Seven's name is not M Nicki Minaj's full name, so... <laughs> but he said it. Yeah, for memes. <laughs> right, well, let's split up and look around. We need cards with the moon on them for the next AB game, right? I just stared at that- Octopus looking guy thing machine. <laughs> this cannon is 12 inches. No! <laughs> I feel like- I feel like we've missed the point. <laughs> no, it's nine, but it doubles. Then let's get started. Because it would be 18 and one plus eight. The digital root of 18 is nine! Whoa! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Alright. Switch this bad boy to be easy. And save, because we're out of time. Oh god. We'll be doing the control room next time. Oh my god. <laughs> the greatest QA ever. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, like, I'm, I'm putting a stop to that. I know I was the one who initiated this train of conversation, but... The greatest Q&A ever, that's fucking hilarious. That's what I mean, though. He's- he, uh, he interacts with his audience. And it's pretty great. And some of his jokes are- some of the responses to his questions are... 100% tomfoolery galore, but... <laughs> It's great. <laughs> yes, that is all the time I have left. When we resume next week, or when well, we should resume next week, it should be in the control room, and then after that, it's like back-to-back -back endings stuff. There's only a few rooms. I don't know if we'll beat the game next week, but... I mean, look at my playtime. Compared to the, like, save data one, which has all the endings. Whew. So say goodbye to YouTube, everybody. Goodbye, YouTube. Goodbye. Ugh. You should start flying through the endings now? Yes, that's exactly what's gonna happen. There's gonna be a lot of that. Ugh. My shoulders. Yes, night bye. Goodbye. Goodbye, YouTube. Farewell.